Happy Monday, everybody. It is August 8th. Yeah. We're going to do this show. Right on time. The 8th of August. That's right. We waited until today so we could bring you this show. Lucky August 8th. Yep. We originally, uh, look. Remember, remember, the 8th of August. Uh, if remember? you don't, you're a real piece of toast. Mm-hmm. That's what's on the greeting cards. It's, no, no. Sizzling. Sizzling. Sizz, sizzler. Steak house. Brought to you by our friends over at Sizzler Steakhouse. How you doing, man? Steak and ale. <laughs> thumbs up. Oh, we got a thumbs up. <laughs> Texas Roadhouse. What if they just remade Roadhouse, but he said Texas Roadhouse. He said Texas every time. <laughs> they he are making, remaking Roadhouse, right? Aren't they? Are they? Yes. No, and, and it was some uh, weird casting. Oh, Conor McGregor is one of them. <laughs> what? And and Jake Gyllenhaal. Wow, yeah. for Amazon Prime. I'm not gonna what would be great is, I... if, is if Conor McGregor was like the manager and Jake Gyllenhaal was the, the bodyguard or the... the, the, the bouncer i wouldn't doubt that that's the case because I, I guess they overcast the side character because it's gonna they're gonna try to market conor mcgregor as a lead actor the problem is conor mcgregor is a small boy is he he's not big he's not tall he will not eat yeah them on look, in the hall look what he happened tom cruise's not. career because true. of that i mean yeah that's true right it's hollywood so they can make stallone look gigantic. stallone's a short guy yeah. But he's yeah he's 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 a little bit more lithe. Although who knows? I mean, maybe he'll just HGH out of his mind and look like a like a monster. Who knows? Apparently, it's being shot in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I, I wish we had you know the eight golden age of super fit male leading martial arts stars like Steven Seagal. If only we could go back. Exactly. To that age. If only. <laughs> I mean, we could if they would use promo code. River, we bought Eagle. it. <laughs> We bought Steven Seagal. We're like, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like John Cod Madonna. We're like, I guess he knows what he's doing, you know? So was, like, that, was that Ovitz or Eisner that it, Seagal was his personal trainer? And he's like, I'm such a powerful executive. I'll make you a star. And he did. It was really? one of them. It was one of the, the big oh, agents uh, turned uh, uh, studio execs that was like, like, no, Seagal. Seagal's the guy. My personal trainer. We'll call it a, a star is curled. As far as curled, maybe that's something. All righty, you guys want to do some weird things podcast? Mm-hmm. We Ready. do. We do. All right. Here we go, Andrew. I'm gonna count you in to start us in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast with your four hosts. It's always been four hosts. It's just the way that it is and will always be. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Oh, as always. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Uh, greetings. It's so good. Gentlemen. That, that the four of us, you know, <laughs> some people may say we should have shaken things up a while ago, but I'm glad that the four of us, as we always have, every single week have shown <laughs> up. I agree. That's right. It's always, and it's always been four. If you've ever heard, if you I think you've ever thought, heard this show. Yeah, no, yeah, it was never not that. It was That's not right. Us. Just read your Baron Stein bears. Exactly. That's right. It was never two people for three unreleased episodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Wait, unreleased? Yeah. We never oh. released them. Are they in the vault? I mean, God knows where they are. <laughs> I mean, how, how many how many hard drives that I've just like fried or 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 moved computers and never copied stuff over? But oh, I I I, th- I thought you used were used a power I thought drill you were on like, when you heard a knock on the, the door. Download. Hey, knock it off! <laughs> I thought you were accusing Bryce of not releasing the last like three episodes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Initially, Andrew and I were were looking to do it by ourselves, and then uh, uh, we we did a on a lark. We're like, well, let's do one with. Ryan I and then it was and then it was and then it was uh in it was the show and we were like well let's not release these other ones because we were batching them so we could all oh, that's right yeah, yeah. oh anyway I forgot about this yeah <laughs> then we all died and then I uh, shut up <laughs> yeah and then at some point we we adopted Bryce and uh he's living a very healthy life and <laughs> I run yeah, on my yeah, wheel I drink yeah, in my bottle oh, yeah he's great uh-huh. 
And so then, like, Bryce wakes up in a hospital, and it was all a dream. <laughs> we... He gets knocked out. But he gets yeah. up again. <laughs> They're yeah. never going to keep me down. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. So a uh, lot to talk about here. Uh, first is uh, I want to do a little AI topic, and that is that there was a, a, a decision was made. The U.S. federal court has confirmed that an AI system cannot patent inventions because they are not human beings. And oh, wait. Uh, okay. Go on. So a little bit of background on this. Uh, there's a, a gentleman uh, by the name of Stephen Thaler who's who's filed some different things, copyrights and stuff before on behalf of patent on behalf of AI. And I have to tell you, speaking purely not at all related to any professional capacity I've done, this has caused so much confusion because court decisions and uh, decisions made by you know federal government offices are confusing by themselves has led to people misreading this and saying things and things like, well, you know, you can't copyright AI art. Like, no, that that's there's no decision that ever said that at all. There's a decision that said AI an AI can't, can't own copyright. the copyright to it. Yeah. But can. you will find articles by journalists that say, oh, well, and I've seen, and it's caused personally a little bit of, you know, like people who are like, well, you can't do this because of this is like, no, they, they could at some point they could say that, but that's never been said. It's literally the AI can't own the copyright. So uh, uh, I was having lunch recently, and somebody, I can't remember if it was Corey or Justin, uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, with a smile talked about some people who represent themselves as AI artists. And, and I immediately leapt to the defense of that idea because there is definitely a craft uh, to describing a scene that you want executed uh, 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 cor correctly. I, I, I mean, like I feel like a director, like for, for example, um, uh, uh, being in the beta uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, Dolly, I, realized, oh wait, what if I did photorealistic representations of uh, famous cartoon characters? So I would, it took four or five tries to, to get there, but I decided- To say an orange cat who loves lasagna. Uh, no, 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 it was an, if I may defend my craft, uh, it was an, a, a, an overweight orange uh, striped uh, cat uh, about or, or eating lasagna in the background are seen. Uh, originally, I wrote a middle-aged man and a uh, yellow Labrador to represent uh, John and Odie, but but it just ignored the the yeah. John part, which you know what it happens. Wise decision. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so and so I posted it just with the phrase "found the real Garfield," and it is probably the most successful tweet I've had in uh, three months or so. Yeah. I, I don't wow. think like, like that's pretty good. Right. It looks like uh, it, it's an orange cat looking at some lasagna and there's a great cat and a blonde dog in the background. That's, that's like, uh, if you're just looking at it in postage stamp size on Twitter, you would be forgiven to believe it was in that you got an actual orange cat looking longingly at a tray of lasagna. I just happened to snap yeah. a, an impromptu photo of, of, of what looks like the real Garfield or whatever. Uh, you could, and, and there's a, a tweak I could show you that would just make it photo real. And then nobody would ever think that this cat wasn't real cat. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, oh. uh, we, oh. We'll tee that up for uh, after, <laughs> after things. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but, but uh, my, my point being like, I don't think that what I did is any less real art than anybody who uses Photoshop or, you know, like well, rem remove it, this tree or whatever. But, but no one's arguing. Well, go, go. Not art. Well, let's, say, let's just go, go back to, when the photograph came out, artists go like, all you did was aim the camera. Like, all you did was aim the Sorry, Mr. Degur. All you did was point your box there. You did nothing. And it's like, who who disputes that photography is not an art now? Right. Correct. Correct. And, but and, 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 but oh. the complication comes from comes out of copyright. 
Right. Do I? No, we're not talking about copyright. Well, no, mean, no, no, but, no, 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 no. The, the okay. issue here is, again, totally separate from art. It, it is whether or not AI Legally. itself can own patents. Right. Like, so, like so do, can you, do, can do you have... I own this image or does Dolly no, own no, this no, image? No, 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 no. Not even, this has nothing to do with art at all. Like, this is literally like, can an AI, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, can an AI apply for and hold patents? So no. separate from right. art. Like, that's what the ruling was. Okay. The ruling was that only that was... human can own patents. This has yeah. nothing to do Th with anything that's going on right now. Like yeah, Thaler had had done created an image using a system called Creativity Machine, and he filed for the copyright on behalf of Creativity Machine. Yeah, he said, "Oh, Creativity Machine should own the copyright because it's the AI that did it." And they're like, "Uh, did it do it by itself, or was there a human in the loop that pressed a button or did something here?" Because we think it goes to the human, and so it's but it's weird because that rule that that decision, it's I've seen prominent technology journalists quoted as saying well you can't copyright ai art and it's like yeah. oh it, when you explain it this way you understand it but i've it's a it's a crazy new world where the complications are going to be more complex I, I'll, I'll tell you what it would be brian if you applied for a patent on lasagna cat the copyright distinct uh, uh, animal that you made and posted on twitter and then you said applying for this patent is not brian brushwood but lasagna cat, the yeah. copyright distinct creature I, mean, I posted on Twitter. If where we're ending up is me being prejudiced in favor of humans over AIs, I'm a hundred percent pro human. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, like, like, I, like, I, I, I agree we, with the decision. I, I, I think the, the, yeah, the yeah, issue yeah. that Andrew is bringing up is more of a journalistic one than a necessarily super interesting in terms of uh, uh, where we are in our melding of AI and humanity, and that is that a bunch of people can't read and. It, and, it makes for better well, clicks. And people and, look like, after after headlines. Like when when I whenever I talk about Dolly in Discord, there's always someone who asks, like, "Well, can you do? Well, can you do? They still own your pictures?" And it's like, no, they very clearly it's they don't. It's it's right there. It's in the instructions. They don't and, do that and, anymore. And and, the, uh, uh, and but it's like there was never like a headline. Well, to, or, to be clear, yeah. to be clear, the current version is you get reprint, you get to reuse it and reprint what yes. that and and, and you can monetize. Yeah. That was that was the yeah. new the oh, new yeah. changes yeah. that you can monetize. Yeah. But it's like that's a nuanced answer that requires Which is why all a little the art on my research. substack looks awesome. <laughs> 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 but it is gonna be it, it is we're watching something the rate at which this went from you know a year or two ago it was oh what a what a fun little debate about something that has no effect on our lives to now the pattern of like we've seen Dali uh journalist comes in says hey I want to cover Dali we're like cool we'll talk to you about it explain it let you talk to our researchers they're like oh this is really cool here's my article oh by the way I'm now using this can I use this now in my sub stack for my images? And we're like, cool. And that rate of adoption, like I've been codex for me was really significant about how far codex or code model is, but AI systems like Dolly, the rate of adoption, there's other stuff out there. That's cool too. Let me not just say I'm obviously biased towards Dolly because I think it's the best system, but there's other stuff out there and you can see things are moving so fast. Mm -hmm. It is really fast because I, 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 a lot of my friends are in, all of the have, are are using some of the other ones, and you know some of them are mm -hmm. like via you can Discord. Say their names. Well, I, I don't know the names <laughs> of them, but, but no, okay. no, the names are your friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't but, mention the other AIs. <laughs> but there's a lot of them, and, and a lot of them are spreading on Discord. Like I don't when mm -hmm. I see when I see someone post about it. If I see it on Twitter, I just see the actual picture, and if it that doesn't have the little Dolly thing on it, then you, I usually don't know where it came from. And then when people talk about it, they they either like, oh, I got into the Dolly beta and I'm just getting used to it, or I've been using this other one and I'm going to use that because it I just use it via via Discord or you know. So it, it's it's it is really spread fast. Right, using Discord is actually I think uh, I'll, I'll read Hacker News and people complain, but I think it's actually kind of a brilliant way to do it because. Sometimes you have, like, I play with cool technology and you think, like, where does this live? Should this be its own app? Should it be its own thing? But in doing, with the Discord approach, what they did was basically allowing to create a community. And you're seeing that now technologies where people are like, we're going to create a community about a technology and you'll be able to interact with it, use a Discord bot to use it, whatever. We've seen people do this with chat bots, like, like creating like GPT chat bots, et cetera. So 
I think that's a really innovative way. I think people should be paying attention to because within there, you've got your instruction manual, you've got your customer support, all of that inside of the system where you're using it, which is just kind of brilliant. Uh, what? <laughs> one last silly note. Uh, Bryce, if, if you go to the post before this, I, I actually thought it was a pretty good one of a cat eating spaghetti. Um, and uh-huh. I... Oh, looks like a cat eating spaghetti. Uh, Very small uh, bowl. Oh, you know what? Uh, well, but also... Is it no- soba noodles? <laughs> Those look like soba noodles, actually. I'm sorry, audience. Notice yeah. the whiskers. I, I would like to apologize to all Italians. Oh, yeah. those are soba noodles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then, oh, he's got some real Yoda ear, <laughs> ear hair. Yeah. It's it's uh, uh, Dolly is so much fun because it's it's those moments that you don't notice until you bother to really really look. There was one where uh, I got the cat eating spaghetti, and it was only upon zooming in that I realized that. Uh, at some point, it decided the spaghetti was human hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it mixed. It, it's, it's, uh, I, 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 I was I, doing one the other day, and it took me a while to realize what it had done, but I was asking it to make some marbles images because I wanted some inspiration for marble stuff. And I had asked for a human sized marble. And I didn't realize it until much later that that's why it gave me this really weird looking marble lady in the middle of this picture. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's brilliant. And, it's, well, well, and, and, and that goes back to uh, the question of like, like, no, you're the artist. This yeah. is the tool that's just do it. You're the director. This is your product. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's really fascinating. Like, if, if you break down so much of, like, entertainment, it's trading money for being able to see pictures. And you can. this is just another way to do it. You really can choose what you want to see and how what it looks like. And there's something really pr- primal about it. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because... It's a system, we're in this age of where systems like this are useful. And some of the other image systems are useful. You're getting useful art, not just the derpy sort of stuff you used to just share. And like, look, look at how funny this is. Yeah. But you're starting to get some of these, the better systems uh, are creating stuff that like people are like, yes, I will use this in my newsletter. Yes, I will use this here. Yes, I will use this in a commercial situation because it's good enough for that. And I think that's, it's exciting, a little bit, a little bit terrifying too, because of what's going to be the overall impact. But that's, the, I, we passed this big sort of corner in the last year or two, two years, I'd say with AI systems, with complex systems, where it's gone beyond the toy phase to I, actually do and, and, work. Uh, if you have the budget and um, uh, let's say uh, the software is, is, is cooperative. Uh, if you're a high powered, uh, Hollywood executive and you have a, a loose vision of something uh, for, you know, for example, like um, it's war of the worlds, but a heist movie and it's got Brad Pitt, but he's de-aged to 23 years old and it's got George Clooney, uh, but it also has Sandra Bullock playing three different versions of herself. Uh, do me a favor, comp together uh, what does that look like? Uh, uh, Snatch, yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a scene from Snatch uh, with the text from Glengarry Glenn Ross. Yeah. Show me what that would look like. It's and a then, project and, I call easy to follow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but nothing I have said, uh, all of those are engineering difficulties. None of them are breakthrough difficulties, right? Like yes. there, there, there's sure. no reason all of that couldn't happen with an AI right now. I, I mean, probably. using, yeah, using yeah. AI technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the reason Andrew's not talking is because he's busy <laughs> he's copywriting not. this. He's writing down. No, like the, the, the simplest version is you talk about like style transfer as a concept. And so, and we've, we've seen, I've seen demos of stuff that have been done publicly so I can talk about, but like somebody taking some really cool street art and taking a sculpture and say, apply the street art to the sculpture. And all of a sudden the sculpture has that design. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa, you know, taking the idea of a sculpture and applying it to street art, and and then you can you can do that with a language model. You can try to get it to do more. You know, you, there's a there's a tension issues of like how much it can follow. Like you know, Dolly, I think it's limited like 400 characters, and if you get two or three more concepts in there, like one thing nails really well, two things pretty good, three or four it starts to degrade. But but yeah, it's just a matter of the the the, the path to follow to get there seems like we understand. I 
I have noticed that Dolly, uh, can anybody apply for the beta right now? I believe so. Yep. Yep, anybody can apply. Okay. Yep. Uh, in that case, uh, I'll just send your headshots to uh, <laughs> 1221 North Miami Boulevard, Barbizon Models. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send over to you uh, okay. maybe the best. Uh, I had a, uh, while you're doing that, I had a funny thing with the dolly the other day. I uh, A friend of mine has this very cute dog, and I wanted to see if I could make a dolly do a thing with, her, with his dog. And uh, so I asked it to make a, a cattle dog working the drive through window at Taco Bell. And for some reason, one of the pictures it gave me was a human woman. And the other three were like the thing I was looking for. And it's and so there's still like there's there's not a way to solve for it. It's just like a weird thing that happened. Um, and I yeah, internally, it, there's yeah. things are in motion. But yeah, there, there's there's. Uh, there's stuff going under the hood, you know, sort of, sort of that. And sometimes, but there's one, there's one. All right. So, so in all <laughs> uh, four of them, the dog has a bandana in three of them. The dog has the bandana around his neck, except for one where he's eating the, <laughs> he's bandana. Eating the bandana. Actually, no, he has another <laughs> bandana under it. <laughs> he's got like yep. a bandana taco. <laughs> uh, by the way, I cannot even imagine how much uh, Andrew wishes an AI could do the gymnastics he has to do right now <laughs> about what he can and can't say. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, I'm so used to it. I'm so used to it by now. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is his life. Uh, yeah. His... Okay. So I'm going to send a picture okay. uh, and then um, take, take, uh, take us there. Yeah. Uh, ooh, uh, there we go. Okay. So no, it's, 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 we'll cut this out. Yeah, don't worry. Hey, I would like to tell everybody about... Uh, oh, wait, uh, there we go. Pecos and, and, Pete hot sauce. <laughs> when you need to spice up your tamales, no! get Pecos Pete. Hey! Drop a, drop a dot. It's and, me! Uh, give it, give it a shot. Pecos Pete. Thank you. Okay. Bryce. Bryce I just is sent Spanish, you... so he's allowed to do that, everybody. Yeah, he's Spanish. Mexican Castillo. Bit. Mexican. Bit. Okay. It's from yeah. Spain. I just sent to Bosotros Bryce. Bosotros form. I just sent to Bryce uh, the best uh, complex uh, set of instructions executed huh? because uh, you're right. Like The more room you give Dolly to breathe, the better it does. But in this case, I gave it a lot of details, and it got them all right. I wrote... A detailed, realistic, full-body, oil portrait of a smiling, bearded gentleman wearing tweed and sitting upon a horse. Behind him, a very large full moon is rising behind his many castles. He is wealthy and proud to be in Scotland on this partly cloudy evening. So you want to send it to Heaton? Uh, oh, no, that's where I retrieved this from. Is oh, really? I did send it to, oh, to, to, to Heaton. And then I just described Andrew Heaton. I think for Andrew, <laughs> for Andrew Heaton, uh, I described a bearded guy in Scotland. He's happy. There's horses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, I like I, I, I like giving Dolly um, difficult tasks. Like the other day, uh, I, I, I had it say what is what does the heat death of the universe look like and it gave me some really interesting <laughs> visuals one of two of which what? actually included human beings yeah, well one of them clearly a rap album <laughs> that he, is just uh, amazing he's really into that heat death <laughs> yeah but uh but it's interesting i think i think those non-literal uh, uh uh sorts of of questions are interesting because i don't uh, it i've couldn't imagine what that looks like. No human could imagine what the heat death of the universe actually looks like. Uh, and so the machine can kind of try. Maybe I don't know. It, it's is it is it a new world? Is a book a new world? Well, and and one one thing that I think is very wise, and and I I'm going to assume that the Dolly algorithm, the processing, all of that stuff, is expensive. So. They, you don't get unlimited everythings, and it takes a few seconds for each one to come in. Yeah. So you really think about, I, I, I don't know if this was an intentional thing on the part of OpenAI or not, but it was brilliant if it was. Uh, I think of them as wishes. I only get so many wishes, and, and, I, and I very carefully uh, uh, spend them. 
uh, yeah, sorry, we're, uh, we had a, oh, um, Andrew, can you try disconnecting and reconnecting from Opal, please? Uh, we had a, we had a small network. Sorry. Thank you. I did think it was weird when yeah. everybody was on their phone. Well, I was, because now we're all looking for Dolly things that yeah. we can share. <laughs> so, like, what the, what the hell do you want me to do? Everybody was sharing Dolly things. All right, you back? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we we uh, were sharing uh, some stories of some interesting oh, Dolly. I, I, I think uh, the last thing I said was, um, uh, whether it was intentional or not, uh, the it takes a, a while for the each image to be generated, and you're limited in the number of of generations you get. So as a result, I think of them as wishes, and that makes it so much more fun. It's computationally extremely intensive the amount of resources it takes to do it. So like the time. The, the number of generations you get in the time that it takes. Yeah, it's not an artificial limit. It's literally just, it is a very, a lot but I'm of also, hamsters and wheels. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually thankful for the limit to the amount of daily uses that I get or monthly uses and so on. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 it makes, makes you think about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, and ideally you could get into a place where you kind of, you could just iterate quickly as fast as you can think and whatnot. But for now it's at that happy medium. Um, yeah. But yeah, you see, I linked to uh, somebody created a really cool prompt book, which is just this PDF. Somebody just volunteered to create filled with tons of examples and tips on how to use Dolly by looking out there at the examples, because the nice thing about having Dolly in front of so many people mm. is you get people who discover really cool things. Like literally, if you want to improve the quality of a portrait, you name the film stock, like Portra, like 400, oh, whatever, like you, wow. you use the film mm -hmm. stock, boom, quality pops. Like there are these little tweaks you can do that all of a sudden it just increases. Uh, because I, I, like a language model, uh, 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 model I, I, is it? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, like a language model, it, people go, oh, I asked it, and it gave me a so-so answer. It's like, yeah, because it could respond like the dumbest person on Reddit or the smartest person in the world. You need to tell it what you want. And so this is similar. Sorry, Brian. Uh, well, so uh, what I have discovered is that there's a uh, potency in describing uh, the medium that this appears mm -hmm. in. Uh, for example, a, a newspaper reprint from... A specific year, just pick a year, you know, 1956. Uh, I, 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 I think recently uh, I, I had fun writing a tabloid newspaper from 1997 about a spiky haired blonde magician. And uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 you, you could imagine how wonderfully close to now, who might reality look like? that looked like. Yeah. Who could that have been? Yahoo uh, Serious. <laughs> yeah uh chairman of the board it's it's in, and like i'm glad you brought this prompt book up uh, because i think i've seen this one but i've seen a few of these i've seen a few folks come up with like hey these are you know keywords that make interesting things and uh, and i've noticed that in in the time that i spent using it too is you know a uh, 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 digital art does a, a photography versus an hdr photo versus a, a 3d render versus a video game screenshot uh, it, uh specific, like, like, the specificity like, helps a lot. Uh, macro photography is fun. I I haven't had success yet in in phrasing it right to make it look like uh, an electron microscope photo of something. Mm. Um, but that's that's my fault. I also like a social media photo. Social media photo always manages to get me exactly what i want usually i'm trying to make a picture of a wife guy and if i say social photo <laughs> media it usually gives me exactly what i'm looking you for. get you get that wife you guy. get that wife guys wife guys on demand waiting for that cheese uh so uh, um this may be too difficult a position to put you in andrew but i i can't help but think about the fact that so many people want to be able to put specific either famous, infamous, or personal uh, humans into these situations. Uh, so, for example, casually, uh, I think the other day we were in Dallas, and, and I, just, I just described looking at 
Bryce across the table. Yeah. And and I made sure to put an oil painting of or whatever. So it, it ended up being mm -hmm. uh, very close. Oil painting of handsome young V. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> This, this is very on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> He's at a coffee shop <laughs> looking at his phone, distracted, mm -hmm. but bemused by something he saw. Okay. In his eyes is a <laughs> hunger that not even he understands. Sorry, I was looking so, at my phone. And, 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 and I, knew, I knew to make sure. He's to... pretty, but he doesn't realize it. <laughs> All of these are actually really good <laughs> recommendations. They've worked very well. Uh, but but uh, uh, I, I always make sure to make it in an art representational style mm. so that uh, I, I'm not running afoul of any terms of service stuff. But, but knowing that those rules are there because, you know, we, we don't want, you know, fake news generated by uh, these AIs. Uh, I, 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 do, do you have any thoughts that you are allowed to say about humanity's impulse to go in that direction and ways to stop it <laughs> or, 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 um, or, or, or why <laughs> I'm allowed to say anything I want, whether or not it'll cause a controversy <laughs> or an issue, or I might get, you know, Hey, okay. Andrew, why do you say this? <laughs> um, uh, this is the challenge. This is the challenge that people working in AI right now deal with is there is any technology has the potential for, for misuse, anything, JavaScript, whatever, cookies pop up. So any technology, anything that makes something more efficient or whatever also increases the potentiality, potential for abuse or misuse. Okay. So you know that, and you have to make sure that one is what can you do to not make it easy to be abused. Like what are what are the biggest things you're concerned about to try to limit that to however you can. But the other thing is that, you know, some people might argue like, well, people are going to figure it out, whatever, in the long run. Yes, and you want to give people time to understand and be aware, be aware of this. You know, that that digital images, the quality of this is very much eye-opening for many people. They don't realize how good this is. You don't realize that you can have an AI generate a famous person doing something in extremely photorealistic and create a thousand version of this or fake a thousand social media accounts. That's where we are right now. And you kind of want people to have enough time to sort of be aware to go, oh, that thing I saw, that could be fake. Oh, that thing could be this. Oh, I just got an email from my friend who's trapped in Mexico and it looks just like them. And they say they can't, they can't get access to their bank account. I need to send them money. And they sent me photographic proof. These are the kinds of things people haven't even really thought about. It's not mm -hmm. just fake news. It's like, what if it becomes so cheap to use this stuff and it's unregulated or un, you know, it's unmonitored, um, which eventually that's where you're going it's to going get. To be, is right? it, yeah. So you want people to be aware of like, yeah, if all of a sudden I, Brian contacts me from a new phone account and sends me it's a proof of him that's a photo of him doing something, be wary. Yeah. That may not be Brian. Brian, I need a photo of you doing a handstand, and I'll know that it's fake because he can't do a handstand. Exactly. Yeah. That's our secret. That's Bryce, the Bryce test. <laughs> yeah. The, can, the new canary test. Uh, hey, uh, hey, feed some peanuts to your daughter. Prove to me that this yeah. is really you. <laughs> Let me see all six of your fingers on your left hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's like T2. Like, oh, I was just feeding peanuts to my daughter. Your parents are already dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if it was in a closed beta email or public, but there, uh, there was an article I read where uh, OpenAI was talking about uh, uh, the use of a red team, where basically, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which I found fascinating. So it's like, if you want to type in, a, you know, a massacred horse, dead blood everywhere, then it's going to be like, whoa, 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 buddy, what are you up to? Right. But, but then the red, <laughs> the, the red team, as one is wont to do, you know, you hey. get laid into brunch and you're like, I need to see a massacred horse. I was watching Westworld. I got some <laughs> but, ideas, but, 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 but the red team would do clever stuff. Like say a horse resting half in red liquid a lake right. uh, around it and then and you would and i i i, I, I don't know I, I i if 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 i i don't know which parts of these are public or or how to talk about it but that but, that was fascinating to me yeah. yeah so that's yeah we have teams we have we have red teams as you described and their job is to 
anytime we have a new model, a new capability to go through and continuously figure out like, how could it be misused? How could it be not in alignment with our goals? Uh, when you feedback, when you say, hey, I found a problem with this, whatever, they look at that. So they're always trying to figure out like, how, how do you mitigate, you know, how do you mitigate that? And it's not to say that you reach a point like, ah, oh, it's perfect. There's no way it could be abused, but it's like, no, we don't we just don't want to make it easy. You know, we don't want to make it too easy for somebody because nobody I work with wants to find out that the thing that we've been working, open AI is special in the sense that like we really are working towards AGI as a benefit to humanity. That really is our goal. Not just because, ah, oh, wouldn't it be cool? It's like, no, we think if you get here, it can help people. And if along the way, it causes more damage than it does good, then that's a fail. That's yeah. not good. Or or at least a, you know, a, a, a decades long setback legislatively well, yeah. on and, the and, country and, and, and so on. I, 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 would, I would say, you know, for open AI, which has long positioned itself, you know, in, in, in even previous incarnations as being there so it can be the pace car for artificial intelligence writ large, that, that a, a company that is trying to make good decisions so you know, literally other, the rest of the industry can, can at least have one good example of, uh, of what, what things are doing. I think like them, them slow walking some of this stuff is, is not only good for society, it is good for the company. And I think it is good for, for the, the tech specifically. And, well, and, uh, if anything, it's, uh, definitely spurning a genuine immediate need for like, if, if you're a corporation and you're worried about um, uh, uh, the copyrights on some of your images and so on, uh, uh, I you are you are, you are already doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are forestalling some of those battles. But but you're right that, that the the natural instinct is for people to just say famous people because uh, I was talking to my buddy Kevin Ryan and I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm in Dali and, and no, like name me a thing. And he was like, oh, Kanye West and Charles Bukowski sharing champagne. Right. And I was like, like, well, all right, let me just. I could I, do an oil painting of but, that. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> I, I, I know what you want, but what you yeah. want is a, a, a mustachioid older white man sharing champagne with a puffy jacketed black man oil painting. Right. And I sent him exactly that and he's like, whoa. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's that like like what what people want and and how to give it to them is is interesting, but I think it is smart on the platform side not to indulge immediately like celebrity do celebrity thing cuz like let's just say, especially the privacy of your own home, Charles Bukowski and Kanye West sharing champagne would be search one if you allow <laughs> if, 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 if you allow direct well, access to those things. uh one of the, one of the crazy things is before we even heard about uh, uh this technology uh, uh, before three of us heard of this technology uh, uh we were talking about the importance of uh digital image fingerprinting and uh how you know various cameras are able to uh, have a, a encrypted yeah, you know, unbreakable mark that says no, 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 real photo, definitely real photo. So that's another cool thing about me. <laughs> well, here's some I, real yeah. advice. Definite real advice. Head to patreon.com slash weird things. What? Stop. Uh, uh, patreon.com slash weird things for the war effort. Stop the war effort on your mind. Stop the, the, the war to bore you has ended. Thankfully, thanks to weird things, which you can support at patreon.com slash weird things. Stop reminder. This is a message brought to you by Geritol. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go support us give us money you get after things early it's a good time everybody enjoys it if you do it then congratulations you're if you a good don't person. do it you're kind of weird uh not gonna say I'm we're not all saying you're you. weird i'm not saying you're weird i'm saying I'm, that you are people human are talking. and people humanity are is talking. not as good as others People. Around that old water cooler. They're cool with blah, the water blah, 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 talking blah, 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 about blah, blah. you. That's the water cooler. It's weird. That everyone's talking it's around. It's weird that you're not supporting us. About you. Mm. <laughs> Stop. Jericho. So I sent a text message a while back to the gentleman here. Yep. And uh, I unwittingly started a Weird Things episode in a text timeline mm -hmm. because 
I found something that was fascinating, a group of people who were up to some very interesting things. And then as I dug, dug deeper and deeper, it just got kind of crazier and more awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I refer you to the Church of the All Worlds. You're like, okay, it sounds like kind of a broad sort of Church All Worlds. Where you did know, this get even, started? Even, even on, on the basis of churches, you know, not all that weird. There, there's a church that you drive by if you're driving on the highway in Orlando, which is uh, Mary <laughs> Queen of the Universe, uh, awesome. uh, which is an amazing name for a church. So, so the Church of All Worlds, right? Like that, that's not even all that odd. All right. So imagine you and your buddy, it's the 1960s. You read Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land, mm -hmm. which is an awesome book, very counterculture sort of book about a guy, uh, earthly and raised on Mars, who comes back to Earth and introduces Mars religion, which has a lot of free love and communal living and et cetera. It's pretty so groovy. Really That's pretty groovy. Mars that is a pretty groovy place, according to uh, Heinlein. By the way, diving in, not knowing anything about that book was a real treat because it's like uh, it's like this uh, graph of like, oh, he he understands this very good thing. Oh, he does not understand or he misunderstands this other thing. He understands this good thing. And then everybody forms a commune. Mm -hmm. And then I get superpowers. And practice cannibalism and yep. other stuff. But yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so imagine you're reading this, you're like, hey, this sounds awesome. Let's start our own religion. And that was the birth of the Church of All Worlds, uh, started by Oberon Zell Ravenheart, who <laughs> served as church primate. Church and, primate? Yeah, that's actually a religious term. Really? Primate? Uh, yeah. Oh, look at yep. that. What about Oberol uh, Ravensclaw? Is that, a, is that another church <laughs> name, or is that something he just came up with? Well, listen, how these things are inspired, who are we to judge? Yeah. Uh, uh, he, the founder, along with his wife, Morning Glory, Zell Ravenheart, designated okay. high priestess, they were formed in 1962. And they, the, they started some other groups of friends. This is the 60s. It's kind of easy to get people on board. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to burn my draft card. <laughs> I'm not going to Vietnam. So uh, I, I am in awe. I have nothing to say, but like this, this church, the way that it morphed is amazing because basically it started to... Uh, they were like, hey, you got a church with this really kind of crazy cool church. And we started to bring in other people to like be part of this. OK, um, this may be the one of the founders may have been the person who invented the term polyamory. Really? You want to know what? So, if I were to guess where polyamory started, it might have been right here. I might have invented this entire situation. This seems exactly where polyamory invented Right. And so one of the things that they did is you want to make money, you know, like you could do one like one other religion inspired by science fiction where like they sell these auditing courses and they bankrupt mm -hmm. people to this credit. This church had the greatest money making scheme of all time. What's that, Andrew? Made a unicorn, sold it to Ringling Brothers. I, uh, mm, there's a flaw in yeah. the sentence that you just said. And we're, we're making sure it's a physical horse with a horn, not a unicorn that you would find in other elements of polyamory. <laughs> well, when they when they looked into the history of unicorns, one of the things they noticed, they often were described as very goat-like. And there is supposed to be, like Pliny the Elder described the how to create like the, the a unicorn. Oh, you take yeah, the yeah, yeah. So you, 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 braid, like you braid the two horns yeah. together, right? And so they yep. grow as one. And so if you may remember that Ringling Brothers for a while advertised, hey, we've got a real unicorn. And if you could find some video of that, you know, and, and you know, jokingly, we call it a go to corn in my circle. But uh, <laughs> they said, hey, we've got a unicorn. And what that circle was where it came from. gathers together and discusses goats that may be unicorns. And that wow. look at this. And that looks like they a look unicorn great. to me, dog. They look great. Yeah. Yep. No, I mean they they have they have the bearded kind of a uh, 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 Billy Goat's gruff, but but oh, they, they're totally groomed. But no, those no, no, are no, but they, but those horns. Me, but those horns, man. Those are those are substantial unicorn horns. And and they definitely look 
I, I pictured them swirled together, but uh, they That's definitely great. look fully fused. Yeah. Yeah, I I believe it. I have That's I unicorn. have no criticisms. <laughs> I have nothing no 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 criticisms to say of this other than I mean, there may be, we may find, you know, there may be another start. There could be a whole Netflix documentary that's going to come out and change your yeah. minds on this. But, hey, I mean, they ended up making unicorns. Like, how awesome is that? Uh, so they end up making the unicorns. And then some of the members of the church have gone on. And now they have a, ready for this? Mm -hmm. The Gray School of Wizardry in Whitehall, New York, oh, where hold you can on. go study. Hold on. There's only one wizard academy that I know of that's <sighs> legitimate because it has a tower. Who are these guys? Uh, they're the gray school of, gray school. of wizarding. Mm. I, I'm going what, to read what, to you. Do they have let, a let yellow lightsaber? Uh, let me, no, let me no, quiet, no, no. quiet, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. Let me hey, Brian, read. shut up, hey, shut up, shut up. Hey, I'm going, hey, shut your I'm, mouth, shut up. Excuse Please. me, uh, excuse me, Andrew. <laughs> Brian, shut, shut your up. mouth. Shut up. Shut I've got to read to you. <laughs> I've got to read. Is, has Brian shut up yet? I don't Brian, know. Brian, uh, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> shut your mouth. I've got to read to you. <laughs> The they they have a the Gray Council is composed of some two dozen authors and mystics and magicians and leaders of neo pagan communities, including Raymond Buckland, Raven Gramasi, uh, skip skip Morning Zori Glor Morning Glory Zell Ravenheart, Robert Skipley Ellison, Nick Scully, Jeff McBride. Oh! <laughs> I didn't I didn't know. I didn't is it worth the shut up, Brian? <laughs> Was it worth the shut up? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm glad I shut up. All right, Brian, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so what do they do in the gray school? They well, gotta, okay, I mean, so they for have background, Jeff McBride. I mean, and, and if you don't all, know Jeff McBride, uh, uh, first of all, Jeff McBride is magic is, legend. Uh, magic, magic legend. legend. May, uh, uh, maybe one of the all-time great card manipulators. Uh, uh, he he took a Kabuki theater mask uh, stuff. Fa famous. And, I mean, safe to say his 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 uh, grand uh, contribution to the world of magic legend is his mask routine, right? His uh, mask manipulation yeah, yeah. routine. Well, I would. I, or go, uh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, to magicians, he's a wonderful teacher. Jeff, yeah, Jeff's exactly. passion for magic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, Bonnie and I, uh, part of the reason that I even feel the, the remotest audacity to, to try to teach whatever I know about being an independent creator, being a magician or whatever, yeah. uh, comes from Jeff McBride. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, uh, Bonnie and I were dating uh, and I proposed to her uh, marriage uh, at Coney Island the night before we attended uh, Jeff McBride's mystery school. And uh, uh, I, I, Jeff occupies uh, sacred territory in my heart, but also uh, he is out there it, it is not much of a surprise to me that uh, that 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 this is he is the he is on the elder the, 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 the elder yeah, council of wizards. Yeah, it, it, yes, it, it, it made perfect sense when I saw. It. I'm like, yes, of course. What good is this council of wizards if Jeff McBride if Je is not exactly. on? There? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, so Jeff, good. 100%. he's so good. Jeff is a phenomenal Jeff. Like we just showed some like artwork, like or some photos of Jeff, like in it's crazy. And that's Jeff going shopping kind of look too. Well, and, and also, yeah, like, no, like, no, no, like, he uh, is he is the same on and off stage. Uh, that is that is a fact. Uh, Jeff was inspired by Kiss uh, in the 1970s uh, to create his over the top uh, 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 makeup look. Uh, he was inspired by Kabuki theater uh, with the mask work. And uh, my goodness, it's really, really incredible magic. And his card manipulation is second to none. It is uh, one I, of the very best things you can ever look at. I saw him, first time I saw him perform live was at a magic lecture. I was a teenager. And Jeff, I was six feet away from the stage. And Jeff did his card manipulation routine. And it was one of like, I've had like two really transcendent experiences in magic where I watched people that close that even knowing all about magic and did not, Rocco Solano was another one who was phenomenal, but in Jeff's card was just, 
amazing, like flawless, flawless. And it was just, it just was like, it made me love magic because this was really what magic could be like. And when I've, I've lectured in some places where Jeff has lectured and I always like to watch Jeff lecture because Jeff's love for the craft and love of teaching is just, it's easy to go like, well, he dresses kind of goofy and he seems a bit out there. He's so does Mick Jagger, <laughs> you know, no, like, no, he, like, is, like, he is, he is him and he lives an authentic and, and uh, uh, an authentic lifestyle to, to who he wants to be. And the one thing that I will always say about Jeff McBride for whatever, you know, uh, 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 you know, one might say about uh, uh, the fact that he is so singular that you can parody him uh, is that he takes things seriously and his craft is so unassailable that it, it to me is the North Star for art, right? Like if, if your yep. craft is unassailable and you believe it, it will work. Like, so it, it just structure your belief get better and and you too can be uh, uh, somebody for whom is as singular a talent as Jeff McBride. He also no joke like understands um uh archetypal magic maybe better than any human I've met and he understands the importance of ritual and how it will transform an experience like uh, 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 we, Bonnie and I went to mystery school where we're going to meet cool magicians and learn tricks uh but but there was a full-on uh, drum circle beforehand because he understood that at a primal level this is what it takes to transform your mind into a more um uh, uh as as um uh, uh, uh jonathan height says in uh the the righteous mind uh, uh we are 90 percent primate and 10 percent bees and and he knows that it's important that you get into that tribal mindset and understand that you're about to meet the shaman, capital T, capital S. It's, he's, I, 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 you have made my day so happy. <laughs> I, I'm sad that mm -hmm. I didn't read this beforehand. It's amazing. So he, he's, Jeff is one of these people that sometimes you have to sort of kind of encounter multiple times, you know, to, to really appreciate what this is. Because in the first, you see like, Man, this guy seems really eccentric, and uh, he likes 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 a lot of a uh, Renaissance type clothing and stuff. <laughs> and then and then and then like, man, he talks about some crazy kind of stuff. But then when you get deeper and deeper into it, and as Brian said, like mystery school is this thing that it has this reputation outside of there of like just this crazy hippie magic club of like almost cult like kind of thing, and it's not. It's just a very immersive experience. I've never done it, but I know people who are very skeptical hard-nosed type of people who've gone there and absolutely adored it and loved the experience because well, and, and, and it's including, mystery. Uh, uh, the famous Tell skeptic, uh, uh, Bob Neal, uh, Robert Neal, was, mm. that's where I first met him. And uh, one of the rituals we did going in uh, was talking about, you know, who we wanted to honor. And I think I called, uh, I, I summoned the spirit of Karl Popper and of, uh, of, of, you know, uh, scientific thinking or something, and and Bob Neal was instantly in on on the whole thing. It's it's where I met Eugene Berger. It it's it was great. Yeah, and it's it's I would I would say that like yeah for me, uh, Jeff Jeff is very much proof. Don't ris don't push something immediately away because it seems so different or so outside or so counter to like your own experiences. And I'll give you an example. Like I had a I had an acting teacher who was, I would say that she embraced a lot of really kind of crazy supernatural and superstitious sort of stuff that was sometimes when she'd talk about stuff. And at first it was kind of like, oh dear, you know, I got to deal with one of these. But then when I listened to her explain subtext in acting, when I listened to her talk about this, I realized, oh, I have so much I can learn from her. You know, her her intuition to how to exploit how she believes things to work is different than my own, but her experience and ability to communicate was wonderful. And I've I've learned many times I've learned things from people who I think like, okay, I don't know if their grounding of science is really good, but man, they got some wisdom. Uh it's a little bit like uh, oh, this is too far to go around, I I I suspect, but but try to stay with me. 
Um, uh, uh, remember uh, Pendulet, Paul Provenza, they did The Aristocrats, uh, a, a famous joke that everybody has their own unique take on mm -hmm. or whatever, and they got everybody to tell it, and they all told it in different ways, some with kind of detached irony, some, you know, with, with like diving in and describing every uh, scatological, terrible detail, thing, yeah. detail or whatever, but only Sarah Silverman described the story from the first person. Yeah. She, she described it like, well, I mean, I used to tour with the uh, whatever My family. And, yeah. and it's like that. And then, and, and, and her joke ends with a, a terrible accusation of sexual impropriety from a very famous Hollywood person. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was her like one upping of the punchline of the, of this joke. Uh, and uh, according to Pendulette on his podcast, uh, that person was very upset that he was being accused of this, and uh, and and said that he wanted to sue, and uh, and and she said uh, her response was, and Sarah Silverman's response, uh, uh, or yes, uh, 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 and Pendulette says this is why you should never mess with Sarah Silverman, yeah, is because her response was. Well, I guess we'll just file criminal charges. <laughs> that, that was the way to make it go away. It was, it was, uh, but but that level of immersion of being all the way in the moment, um, no matter how zany or kooky or or manufactured the world seems that you're being brought into, is so very effective. And it's something it's something they're good at the wizard Academy business marketing school here in Austin, something I would like to be better at here when, you know, we're teaching classes for how to be an independent creator or whatever. I want to, I want to share with something I just saw on Twitter, which I think is fascinating. Kind of explains a little bit sort of about kind of like that openness, uh, in making, you know, experiences like this. It's a Dukes of Hazard fan fest, including a, with the general Lee, Roscoe's patrol car, a number of some of the star cars that were featured in there, like a version of Knight Rider and some cast members that originally were the Dukes of Hazard and the stunt man who appeared in it. Right. Uh -huh. And you kind of go like, that's really cool. Like sort of neat that this is here. We are 2022. People are celebrating this. This was tweeted out by Rory Sutherland because this is going on in Elham Kent. In England. Uh, 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 Rory Sutherland is the author of Alchemy, Alchemy. right? What, one yeah. of our favorite books. Okay. Yeah, he, he retweeted this. So this is going on in England. This is in England where they this looks like the most redneck thing you'd be able to do. Like, where is this going on? Tennessee, Georgia? No, England. Did, it, did, it, air, did it air in England? I or, or was that like, like a, 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 a curiosity, an American curiosity that that uh, some people just found? As a matter of fact, uh, streaming culture may have been what brought it. What brings it back. Yeah, what yeah exactly. Like, yeah. like, 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 uh, uh, uh uh, there's a lot. Of, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, Toast of London. You know, it, it, totally ignorant until suddenly it was available. In yeah, America. I mean, and, and and I've had that. You know, even with with American stuff, but like uh, all my friends will get into Frasier all of a sudden because yeah. like there's just a social contagion on Frasier. Laura, I mean, did all, the Ukes of know. Hazard ever air in the United Kingdom? Yes, I grew up in the 1980s along with the A-Team Night Rider. The Dukes of Hazard was a childhood staple on TV. We weren't attuned to the southerness of it. It was just all American. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I I kind of love that night. What were the three Night Rider, Dukes of Hazard, and what? A team and, and the A team. A -team. Yeah. Like yeah. that was America to the rest of the world. I mean, you know, I'll I'm you okay what, I'm with, with it. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We all of them loved cars. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, uh, stuff blowing up. Stuff blowing up. No, I think uh, uh, that's 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 fascinating, uh, and it's why partly that like. I remember watching this video where people were asking uh, uh, people on the street in London to do American accents. It's oh, my favorite and, thing. And the two accent that you get, the two accents that you get the most are Southern and Valley Girl. Like uh, weirdly, it's not New York. It it, it it is like like the most fun accent. I would say the most fun what, American what, accents what, like, are like, Southern like, accents. If, if we were Valley to Girls. play the same game Midwest. in England, I would Ooh. go immediately to Cockney because uh, yeah. Oh my God, not like I because, because I know Dick I could Van do Dyke. it. Dick Van Dyke cemented that, right? Uh, and Mary Poppins. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the person. Dick Van Dyke. Mm. He had Famous. a show. He tripped no. over an ottoman. Mm. Now, remember no. that? No. Yeah. 
iconic Ma- actor. But this lady, you I'm sorry, I don't comedian. see dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a Sutherland had retweeted something I'd seen before, which is this: there is a uh, an Italian singer uh performer adriano uh Celentano, who is amazing he is like huge he is imagine mick jagger and jerry lewis combined and you get this guy and uh, this is a song so the smartest man on the planet <laughs> just 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 see just see i clicked the link he did a song because in italy american oh, oh, songs i know what you're about to talk really... about this is amazing yes. this is my favorite thing on the planet Yes, because American songs are so popular, but he realized nobody here speaks English. It doesn't oh, matter as long as yes. it sounds American. Ta- uh, t- uh, take a listen, and we dare you, DMCA. We dare you to de- defile us. <laughs> Jagger, Jerry Lewis. So for, for people for people listening, this is not Italian. This is a, a, a gibberish that is meant to sound like some kind of upbeat version of Bob Dylan, right? Yep. I, on top of that, uh, musically, the composition True. seems so far ahead of its time. Uh, it's I think super this catchy. Is, I don't know if it was... It, 50s or 60s or I think that's his wife by the way uh, his son played Satan in uh, the Passion of Christ oh good thing as one does yeah uh, but yeah I every time I watch I have to watch it all the way through because I'm like this is so fun it's so catchy but you go like oh yeah I see how like I, I can't even understand lyrics in English songs of being in you know native speaker but it's fascinating to think like yeah people in other countries like but but but, yeah. but you totally totally get the vibe uh, yep. uh even if you don't understand a single thing uh speaking of which, which uh, for the record no one did because it was gibberish uh to there there's a clip a clip of them asking will smith on an italian talk show like hey this is a very popular song and could you could you explain this to us and you see just sort of the terror in his eyes as he's like what well, what? When he's like, that's not English. And he's like, not in on the joke, you know, yeah. because they know it's it was just a uh so one of the, the things that uh we found out if 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 we can slide into pics, um uh over the weekend I watched uh Prey, the new Predators mm-hmm. sequel. I preferred Eat and Love. Eat and Love? I I I, I you, prefer. You pray. We're just moving it. We're moving. You it. don't have to one up his joke. You could just laugh. No, no. it took. A, no, that was me not getting the joke, <laughs> and then finally I got it. Oh, um, uh, 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 pray is a very good movie. It's very good, and one of the things that came up was it's a real knockout. Okay. <laughs> Uh, J- Justin, what did you think of Prey? I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it a lot. Specifically, if I can land the transition yeah. before we talk about Prey, yeah, was that okay. um, uh, we asked our, our 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 friend at the local sports bar uh, if he happened to have seen it. He said yes, and he said that he was excited to watch it again because apparently they're doing a version that is entirely in Comanche. Yeah, there uh, there there is a full Comanche language dub of the movie and so uh, uh the the comanche main characters uh speak english during the film uh uh in the you know as to represent their native language but you can hear it entirely in in comanche which uh, uh i and think would show how powerful of a visual and kinetic movie exactly uh, uh it was not until that moment that i realized how much of that story translates e- even if you don't understand a single word of it yeah. uh, uh full disclosure friend of of the show yeah. uh, dan shout out, shout out dan trachtenberg uh, uh directed amazing we're very excited yeah, yeah. For Ama- I, amazing work i haven't i haven't seen it i've heard nothing but great stuff 92 percent on rotten tomatoes which is probably the highest predator movie score it, ever it is so I believe legitimately I I'd have to go back and look again but but in my heart right now it's the best predators movie since predator. Yeah, I I think I that yeah that uh, 
that franchise has had a hard time uh, because it it seems to want to always overcomplicate <laughs> the very simple formula and like forgetting that now just put a bunch of people in a place and uh, uh, ha- have something stalk them and then the predator shows up and boy does he want to kill all of them Make but sure you find that- out he's got weird rules and even weirder weapons and then eventually he gets killed by the people did Make- you like, Make sure not see- to show the predator too much uh, 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 did you, you ever see, see- Jaws? <laughs> Did you, did you see the behind the scenes of the the Shane Black Predators movie? No. Some of the stuff like how how much that story changed, which I wanted to see his version, but like literally, there's predators, you know, operating machine guns in the back of Hummers and fighting with humans and stuff. Oh, it's so Jesus. like. But oh, I mean, wait, Shane wait. Black. Like, yeah. Oh no no no! What a wonderful idea because that's something we see all the time. In, it's uh, in sci-fi tropes is humans. Uh, 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 co-opting alien weapons but the idea of aliens co-opting human weapons is pretty dope i mean i I think shane black is one of the best screenwriters of his generation his his uh, batting average is remarkably uh high uh but the fact that like that movie was so so famously kind of such a such a big tangled mess and then it it released to very little fanfare i still haven't seen it have you seen the the uh what is it the predator is his movie uh it's yeah. huge. It's huge. The Predator. Why did I say it twice? Why? Echo. Shane Black is the guy who wrote that. Uh, 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 he, he was there on set on the original Predator movie to punch up the script and just yeah. ended up being so awesome. He was in the movie. Yeah. That's the joke he was telling. Got you. Uh, it oh. was about a woman's private parts. Got you. Yeah. That's, Got you. Yeah. They're so big. Uh, okay. Yeah. The echo. The echo. <laughs> so I like to talk ah, about my pick. Oh, ah, there it is. <laughs> what do you got, Andrew? Uh, my, I'm gonna pick. Uh, this is a little bit of nepotism here. Actually, if you like Predator, I recommend Predator if it bleeds. Uh, no, not Predator if it bleeds. Sorry. Uh, Predator. I'm gonna. I'm getting the wrong one. Uh, that's the one I'm in. I'm trying to pick. My wife wrote a story mm. in the Predator Alien mythology. Ah. Um, and let me get the right a name. Two, of it, a two alien. predator household. They got it right there. <laughs> Double threat. Two predators in every garage. <laughs> uh, let me pull up the book. Uh, she wrote a story called Film School, which is about some student document students making a documentary who go to a planet where the predators or something had been. They don't know quite what's going on. There's like a colony got wiped away, and so. That's the sort of story for that. Let me find out. Um, uh, well, here, uh, while you're looking that up, let me share just a, a very short story that I found out. Uh, 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 the uh, Amazon smart speaker, whose yes, name I whose will name not say. name is ubiquitous. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, continues to impress. I, I found out recently that uh, if you say the activation word and ask her to spell a word, she will do so. So I tested it with a simple word. I tested it with a complex word. And then, because I had to set a good example for my nine-year-old and my 14-year-old, I, I asked her to spell the word I cup. Got you. And Did it? she said, uh, I would rather not. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Which to me was even better. Even better. <laughs> even better that they even saw better. that coming. <laughs> Alien versus Predator, Ultimate Prey. There we go. Ah. Alien versus Predator, Ultimate Prey, and we are looking. It was for so the... hard to find this on Amazon. They got the worst SEO for that book. Sorry. And we are looking for the story by uh, Roshni uh, Bhatia. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if it was Roshni or Rush. So yeah, uh, uh, there we go. Go go get it uh, right now. Read it up. Um, good stuff. I can't believe both of you guys have written Predator uh, stories. That is so funny. Okay. It's it's yeah. it's so you awesome have to, oh. to have I know yeah to have Here friends I have a big where it's like <laughs> like no predator you just, story you just casually find out that they're rock stars. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I've got a pick. Um I've been watching this as it's been coming out. This is a new show on HBO Max. And um there have been a lot of interesting conversations about this show, about the nature of unscripted um programming uh or reality adjacent material and uh 
uh, every week, I think they've only got four or five, four episodes out now. I end up just amazed at how much money they spent on this <laughs> and how how <laughs> remarkably this. dangerous it is the thing that they did or it certainly made it seem this is the hbo uh, not even hbo max this is the hbo show the rehearsal with nathan fielder um so the premise is that um uh, to get people ready for difficult social situations wouldn't it be wouldn't it be advantageous to rehearse that moment? Say if you needed to confess something or break bad news to somebody. So, for example, in the first episode, uh, they, he goes out on Craigslist and finds someone who's got a regret uh, and, and signs them up and say, hey, we're going to do a rehearsal for you telling your friend this lie, this pretty small lie. Um, basically like, hey, I've been pretending that I have a master's degree when I don't. Um and so they rehearse yes. it. That's, that, that, that's a small lie. Uh, it it, <laughs> it seems like if, if I went to a therapist, yeah. and they had something on the wall that looked like a master's degree. And then they confess that they well, did. Maybe yeah. they don't really have it. Sure. But <laughs> this is your dream. This is just your trivia friend. This is just. <laughs> OK. All right. Yeah. And so. OK. So rehearse it. They, hey, let's rehearse. It. Let's figure it out. Uh, and so they build an exact replica of the bar that they choose to go do this in. Not, wow, a very close, you got all of the, an exact replica <laughs> of this entire building in a soundstage. Um, uh, and so for like a week, they hire actors, including an actor for the best the friend that he's going to talk to. And they work through every. Con every way that that conversation can go and then they actually take then the person actually goes and does it and we follow that that um and that's not even the show that's just like a, a thing that they that is a conceit in the first episode but the i i i, I the, it really dives into a lot of these themes that are very heavy to to unpack in here but to get that just gives you a sense of the scale of the nathan fielder ideas that go on I and 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 for the uninitiated, this is the same guy that does uh, 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 Nathan for you. Yeah, the and 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 creates like uh, he did the 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 what was it? Crappy Starbucks or something? Or? Uh, bad yeah. Starbucks, crappy Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he, he is. You know, Nathan for you is about businesses becoming more successful, uh, uh, and and so he would pitch them these ideas. Many of them wound up going viral while they were filming right. and then you found out like during the show being aired like oh that was because it was a nathan for you thing would would it be accurate bryce and i'm speculating here because mm. i haven't seen it that it, it sounds like what you're describing is what extroverts tend to do naturally is talk things out with anyone who will listen to them and practice and rehearse where they're headed uh, uh, and introverts mm -hmm. don't tend to do that. Is it is it taking introverts and actually creating a literal world for them to practice in? Or no, I think it is more. There is a lot more that I think the show says about this style of show and Nathan Fielder's own style of getting people on the show. You know, if you've seen the shows, it's not like they get not necessarily like they get the most well-adjusted people to be in front of camera. It's a lot of mm -hmm. like. Oh, oddballs! Oh, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a and, little bit of look at this uh, genuine I, well, unicorn. And so that's like the that is what that genre is known for. And this show it goes out of its way at, at one point to like put Nathan in the shoes of of someone who goes through the process of being on a TV show. Of oh, hey, you have to sign this release, and you, like actually addressing that. Because 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 part of the conversation before it came up in the show was like, how abusive are these shows? Like how 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 much can you soft trick people into doing things on camera that they probably wouldn't have decided can to I, do on their own? And, can I share a story? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, you uh, can. But before you do, I I have to know, Bryce. Uh, do they successfully get Nathan out of his comfort zone? Uh. It's not about his comfort. Okay, zone. All right. it is intros It is introspective of him and and the ideas uh, that. But he's he sets still the apart. master of the world, right? Uh, Andrew, what was your what was your story? Yeah, yeah, he's a character, anyways. Yeah, and he's he's yeah. very calculated. Uh, when I did I had my TV show for A and E, um, 
you know, magic prank show and having been an extra, having worked as an extra on shows and knowing how you're treated kind of like a prop, like go stand here. Now you're done. Get out of here. Why are you still here? Run faster. You know, call out the dogs. It can be frustrating because you just, you're excited to be part of something. The release. Yeah. Yeah, It's rough. (laughs) You can be, you're excited to be part of it, but then the machine is moving. The machine doesn't have time to stop and tell you, Hey, you're great. Thank you. This is awesome. It's, you know, it's up to a PA to do this. So I wanted to make sure that like, when people, because you know, to do a show, like you've got to shoot a bunch of people, you got to capture a yeah. bunch of people to get the moments to get whatever, and just sort of just run them through to find the right people who click, who don't forget there's cameras there, whatever or what. And so you shoot a lot of lot of lot of people to do this. So I still said, you know what? I don't want it to be. I want to make sure that every person, I just give them a moment when the camera stopped and say, hey, thank you, I really appreciate this. This means a lot to me. And so every person that we would did this for, I would we're shooting our pilot. You know, once they said stop, like, all right, Andy, we got to go to the next location. I'm like, cool. I'd be like, hey, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this. It means a lot to me. Thank you. And remember, these are people where I'm doing stuff like stealing their wallets and yeah. ripping up their money and just doing horrific sociopathic things too. But then I stop and I do that. So we were doing a stunt where I was making people's cars disappear and then reappear impaled on a street lamp, which like legit, like they had no idea how we we're doing this. It was a very complicated Rube Goldberg sort of means of which doing this. But uh, I go and I, I, you know, I do this to a woman and make her car disappear. And then, and then she's like, I need my car back. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, let me help you out. And I do the thing. I hold your hands out here and she hands me her purse. And I'm like, Oh, this is perfect. So I just grab her purse and I just run away with her purse. Right. <laughs> and so I've taken her car and her purse. Okay. And then, and then, so, which is funny, but then, once we're like, okay, cool, we got it. I go back to her, I hand it to her, and she's laughing hysterically because it was just so much fun. I go, hey, just thank you so much. And she reaches out and she hugs. And we cut, right? We'd cut the camera, whatever. She reaches out, she hugs me and goes, oh, this is great. I, I just, I can't believe this was so much fun or whatever. I'm like, cool. Fast forward, we've got an at rough cut of the, of the pilot. And the network's like, um, we know Andrew's really likable. But he comes across as kind of like a serial, a sociopath here, because all you see is me just doing these evil things, cut to the next evil thing, cut to the next evil thing. And they'd like, because in the room, I'm this very warm, friendly guy. Yeah. And they're like, ah, what do we do? They went through the footage and they found that a cameraman had set his camera down on the ground and it was pointing right at when I went up to the woman and said, hey, thank you so much. And she hugged me and whatever. And they had it on audio. They put that back in there and the network goes, yes. They go, oh, this is who he is. This yeah. is, they go, oh, we get it. This is people like him. People are having fun with this. And that was, that's how the show became, happened because uh, they I, caught that moment. I, I remember reading it. I wish I could access where I read it. I, I hope it's true. But uh, at some point I read that people remember the first moment they meet you and they remember the last moment that they see you. And everything in the middle gets a, a, a bit lost in, in terms of judging how they think of you. Uh, 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 God, I hope that's true because uh, in, in in that case, uh, uh, you you played all of that masterfully. Uh, just just to put on the, a button on the rehearsal. Uh, so, so the the episode that came out this week, it's on Fridays, I think. Uh, episode four. Uh, it ends. Uh, when you when you watch this episode, I won't describe it, but when when you watch this episode, something really dramatic happens at the end of it, um, and uh, uh, the feeling that I had towards watching that, I have never had. I'm I, I, a, a television show has never made me feel that. Uh, uh, I, I was scared. I thought I was about to see something really really bad traumatic traumatizing and uh that changed the entire co- to me that changed the 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 text of the show so much of like man like you know there's a question of how much are these people being coerced into x or y or z but how much of the as a viewer am i being coerced into watching something i i didn't know i was signing up for this and even if you if you watch and see and think about what is going on I didn't. I, I even for a minute. I. I. There's. There's some tough questions here. It is difficult. It is kind of some of the cringy sort of comedy um, that Nathan Fielder show has. But uh, 
I am just in awe of how expensive, how many, how many people were involved in this, how many actors they openly hire. There is a point where he's giving a acting class. He's he's and they they have a big sign up front, HBO credit guaranteed, and so you get a couple <laughs> of people come in. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, "Well, you know, I thought the class went good, but I just I I want to know if I did it well." So we hired some actors and we looked at the footage and we trained the actors to play the students from that acting class that we filmed. And so, <laughs> uh, and he stood in as one of, and I'm going to sit in as one of the students to really understand. And then he uses that information to like make the next class better. And then they rehearse that. Like there is, I'm just, I don't know how much bigger they're going to make this because they had to hire a lot of people for a very long time to I mean, do these big stunts. Well, I, I, Not even stunts. I, I, I'm glad he got that budget approved before the new bosses came in because <laughs> I don't I don't know if uh, I don't know if season two is going to have those same zeros. Uh, um, also, uh, 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 gather round, grandchildren. This is how we made fantasies real before Dolly. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh man. It, oh. Uh, so anyway, the rehearsal. <laughs> the rehearsal. It's on HBO. Uh, I think it's great. Check it out. Good times. Uh, I'll Just make mine fast. On the way back to America, I watched The Wedding Singer. Oh. Uh, perfect script. It's like one of those movies where you look back and you're like, like, oh, like, what is, if you're like studying screenwriting, like where every scene leads to the next thing and all the characters mean something and, and they're all on these kind of journeys, everything sort of connects, everything unfolds at, at, at the right pace. The, the humor is hilarious. Uh, uh, the, the acting is awesome uh uh you know i was just looking to kill time on a plane and watch something that i remembered because i was wanted to be able to fall asleep during it but i didn't because it's an hour and a half of pure joy boy peak drew barrymore oh my god what what a what a just a a a, a mega explosion of quiet charisma the, uh there's a slash film article that i have not read yet but i uh intend to and i hope other people do where they uh, basically the headline is Adam Sandler movies. It's kind of hard to figure out which ones are good. <laughs> Here's what we think. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I kind of feel like there's... The question isn't, are Adam Sandler movies good? The question is, are you the target demo for Adam Sandler Oh, movies? no, no, no. His range, though, is like, like, like uh, uh, what was it? Uncut Gems to, to Punch Drunk Love to Happy Gilmore to yeah, I, yeah, to I Jack mean, and Jill. I mean, it's like, well, the, to, but to, they're, to, those to, are different movies for different audiences. Exactly. Yes, correct. What, so, like so, Grown so, Ups, Jack and Jill, stuff like that. Those are effectively kids' movies. They, they are, they are family friendly, very broad, you know, uh, kids and family movies. Uh, uh, obviously for the, the ones that I grew up on when I was the exact target demo, like Happy Gilmore and, and uh, Billy Madison and stuff like that, that was very much dedicated toward this kind of juvenile element. The Wedding Singer was a bridge, and, and he's done a lot of very sweet rom-coms for which he has uh, gained acclaim. And then, like you mentioned, with Punch Drug Love and Uncut Gems, he's established himself as a very credible, like, uh, like a serious actor. I mean, I mean and, and, and not just credible and serious, but like, insanely good he's insanely good uncut gems made me uncomfortable in the way bryce that that you were describing the end of the uh, the rehearsal did yeah someone didn't grow up with a gambling addict uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh uh yeah no i, I would i would say uh, would that make maybe, you maybe, more comfortable no, i maybe feel like i was back at home <laughs> Nostalgic. Some, somebody, somebody, somebody sweating the over of a regular season NBA game they had no knowledge about. Like, oh my god, it's like, oh Jesus, I need the heat. so many of these memories. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that uh, you know Adam Sandler. People forget that when he made that deal with Netflix back in the day, that was one of the first big deals that Netflix made. And guess what? It paid off for everybody. Yeah. That is a Hollywood deal for which they kept everybody doing won. They kept that yeah, they I'm sure they finished that deal out and are making even like my friends were talking about that Halloween movie he made, the Hubie Halloween. Hubie Halloween. I was, I liked that movie. Yeah. yeah it it's like and it's like that's not a I, dramatic thing. That's another just like a goofball yeah. goofy comedy. I my I've said this before my the thing I love about Adam Sandler movies and, and the one you have to go and the things that he's produced like bench warmers and other stuff, 
to. Like, like uh, every if you watch these movies, they go, ah, people got ah, a bunch of fart jokes, stuff like this. I'm like, oh, but there's a humanity there because the, the 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 moral is that everybody's worthy of love. Yeah, you can be the most weird out there sort of person, but you you deserve kindness. You may not, you may get, you know, some, you know, face plants. You may go through some abuse. You may be something else, but you're all the, the weirdest of us are worthy of love. And you look, you look at that theme. You look there, like, oh, there's a humanity there that yeah. I watch other movies, like, oh, I love this. I'm like, hey, it was cold. It was like it showed that, you know, there were categorized people too much. Where I thought that. You know, that's what I liked about them is that they just there was actually humanity there. Uh, I listened to an interview with uh, Drew Barrymore and she was talking about 50 First Dates that they were so they both loved the wedding singer so much. It was such a gigantic success for them that they were nervous about doing the next thing because they didn't want it to reflect on the wedding singer. Uh, but Drew Barrymore for a while was trying to produce 50 First Dates as a very serious and sweet movie. And it never was able to get off the ground. Next thing you know, it falls into a few people's hands. And then she finds out that Adam Sandler has it. And he's rewriting it as a very goofy, very broad, you know, kind of Adam Sandler movie. And she came to him and was like, hey, look, I think this is our next project together. It's a worthy successor to The Wedding Singer. And they spent like six months together working on that script to try to meld those two tones and and I think it succeeded although it's been a while since I've seen it. That's a good movie. It's no, a movie super sweet up. movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good movie. There yeah. we go. Wedding uh, singer. Big fans. Adam Sandler. Gentlemen. I have the microphone and you don't. <laughs> no. No. Back. It's been weird. <laughs> Alrighty. There was a brief moment that I thought, oh God, I don't think he knows how bad I have to go pee. <laughs> go pee. Go pee. <laughs> Alrighty, we're gonna... Or maybe I do. <laughs> we're going to turn around and do a little bit of after things here in a minute after everybody go takes a break. Yeah. Hey, Justin. Yo, what up, uh, B? What up, B? What up, B? Um, we, uh, we talked about it a little bit on the bonus, but we also kind of didn't talk about it because he was there. But I had a blast at the, at the Dow Boys show last week. Oh my god, that was so fun! I had, oh geez, the Callous Dowboys. God, what a what a, I, you know, Carson Pace. We've known the lead singer of the Callous Dowboys for a very long time, and he has been a part of our community, specifically this show, Weird Things, uh, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been amazing to watch all of the creative stuff that he has put out because he is a tremendously, uh, a prodigious creative output kind of guy. He's uh, very talented. So, you know, the Callous Cowboys obviously get a little bit of a funny name. It, it is a genre for which I am not. I, I think it would be safe to say that either of us are, are natural uh, 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 patrons of, of the ma heavy metal, metal math uh, rock. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, but obviously we love Carson. He was playing in Austin. We went out to go see him. And uh, uh, holy crap. The band is super tight. They, it helps, but they've been on tour for about, you know, three months. So... Uh, they they know these songs <laughs> backward and forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Carson's such a high energy uh, front man. It's it's nonstop that show. I yeah. mean, it is just a wall. It is it's a wall of noise for about forty minutes, and then they play a sample of <laughs> DJ Sammy's Heaven, yeah. and then it's another forty minute wall of noise, and it's great. Like no, like yeah, I'm not normally into their genre, uh, but I always try to listen to anything he sends me, and. Uh, it it was it just, it just felt to, totally different I, I listening would, to it in person. The thing that he the, the new album that's that's uh, coming out within the next few weeks, which we will plug again, uh, is I would say if you've if you've if you have a Deftone sized hole in your heart, mm. then give that new Dow Boys record a spin because uh, they are certainly a little bit more. Um, they 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 bring a melody to this kind of stuff that I don't think is is what you would expect. Yeah. Um, and I loved it, man. It was great. It was great hanging out with Carson, and we sang Weezer together, and uh, <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was it was amazing and fun. And uh, uh, I, I can't wait for them to continue to blow up because they've gotten a fair amount of press yeah. for this for this record. Um, well deserved, I I think. Like they any. What's very funny is anytime I listen to their stuff and like Spotify wants to like play another thing or like a rec of related thing, a similar thing, I can, I can always tell when it does it. 
and it's always worse. It's yeah. always like, I don't know. They just they care a lot about sounding different and, f- and not fresh. new, maybe fresh, but but certainly having their own unique fingerprint is well. And and I think that end. also look in, in any kind of entertainment. Uh, be it music or movies or television, there is a difference between, and this is often the difference between being a star and being an artist, is that like artists create great art. Stars often sometimes create great art, but they promote very well. <laughs> like like you, you often get paid. When you see that uh, a stars are getting paid this gigantic amount of money, it's for the yeah, name. It, it's for the name, for the but it's also for the promo tour. Yeah. It's that you're going to be on tour for about two months and you're going to go around the world and you're going to do every stupid interview thing and you're going to do seven press junkets that are going to make you want to put a drill bit in your head. Movie star blah, blah, blah. Orlando Bloom rates our casserole recipe. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even then, that's a, an improvement of them asking like, so like, what was it like kissing your co-star? Which used to be the same question every, every five seconds, right? Yeah. But Carson is a very charismatic dude. He's a very funny guy. He's a very interesting dude to talk to. And I think that uh, uh, that will help them going forward and has already helped them going forward because when they get these press opportunities, it's more than just like, I don't know, man, I'll make music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so check them out. Check them out. Stream them. Yeah. Celebrity album. Therapist is the new album. Do we know when it comes out? Oh, we'll find out here how celebrity. This is why you can't. And then Dow Boy, you got to type Dow Boys. Otherwise, you're gonna find out for uh, Tom Tom Hanks's practice. Uh, blah, 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 blah. let's see. Do they have a release date on here? I know it's I've soon. Got a, September. Uh, I gotta dip out a tube. Just FYI. Oh, okay. Got it. In 15 minutes. Oh, geez. Okay. Well. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, well, hopefully when Brian gets back. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, 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 but September second looks like. Look at that. Check them out. And also, I'm in their new video. That's right. That was very cool. When you guys were, when you were in Atlanta, was it? Uh, yeah, I was in Atlanta covering the. Uh, <laughs> on my way to the uh, uh, Brian Kemp Mike Pence rally, <laughs> I stopped at a a metal video shoot <laughs> so I could. Uh, I could be parishioner number seven, but but you will you will see me in my shorn head, uh, smiling from the pews of a small Georgia church as uh, Carson <laughs> plays the rock star. Uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was a that was a blast. I was glad to, it was good to get, good to see him again. It had been a long while. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably would have been at a Dragon Con. I think it was the last time I saw him. God, yeah. Well, no, probably. Well, maybe it's Dragon I, Con. Yeah, because I don't think he came to the, any of the, those California shows. No, I mean the South by one where he DJed would probably be the uh, way before then too. Yeah, but uh, um, but yeah, he's he's, he's he's so young. I'm he's so talented and he's very young. Yeah, Bryce, it only it only happens more. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> All these children, they're just getting more talented and younger by the day. Yeah, that's um, that is a very weird thing. We need to put a stop to it. (laughs) You're right. You want to know what, Bryce? You're right. You got to put a stop to it. Enough. It's when are we going to put our foot down and say no more? So I was watching, I was re watching Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. Um, did uh, you? I did. Just kidding. It's a stupid. Oh, anyway, whatever. Uh, Please move on. And um, I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> there's a character who is like really excited to learn how YouTube works mm-hmm. in a very small moment. Um, and I just feel that's going to be me. There, like there's going to be some new coding thing. And that's just going to be me one day. Oh, you you turn on the phone and you hit the you hit the, the Internet button. And- I mean, like it's already happened. How, how, how much do you know Roblox? Right? Like, that's like a new language for a literal generation that, like, has grown up on that thing. But if I wanted to, I could get on, I could get on to Roblox. Sure you could, Grandpa. (laughs) Sure you could. Sure you could. I'll bet you you could, too. I'll bet you you could, too. I could get on to Roblox. Let's get, Grandpa, a warm glass of milk and the evening paper. I know how to log on. Is this where you buy your Roblox? (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) 
<laughs> Where's I'm here God to get yet? my roadblock. I'm not at that point yet. I'm just not. I'm. It's getting there. It's getting there. I'd have to Google. Well, no. Roblox the point is, website. you won't know. The point is that that it's it's not a blind spot because you can see it coming. It's a blind <laughs> spot because all of a sudden one day everybody's doing the Bartman and you have no idea what the hell's happening. That's why I did be real. As maybe be real as, as, be... as, as a desperate flailing attempt to stay young. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Why so, are they so late now? They're all really late in the day. It's very weird. I'm like, I, I, I'm not gonna do it, my guy. Like, you, I'm, I'm in bed. Do you think they had been doing it early because it was the summer? It was like summer vacation, and now that schools are coming back, or they will be coming back, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to start some s. Yeah. Because you know when people are out late. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. I don't know if. Uh, uh, Is he coming <laughs> Maine, back? Main, you might, you might just want to. Uh, Drop out if, if uh, uh, Brian is just farting around here. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know where he's at. Uh, I may do that, gentlemen. All right, well, okay. cheers. Yeah, go for that. We'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll figure out after things. Salute to you. Thank you, Andrew Maine. Um. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, uh, I haven't. Is that part? I, the be real is a very weird thing because I need it. I, if it doesn't happen at the right time, then I'm not going to do it that day. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've pretty much dropped off from it because it was hitting at times when I was in Europe that were not compatible. Mm. And then it started hitting late in America. And I'm like, oh, that's not for me. Yeah. Like I now is prime be real time. Yeah. Hit me. Get me in the studio. Cause I'm going to be like, beep. There's Bryce, oh or there's there's Brian. Mm -hmm. Look at that! What an interesting thing. Everybody who likes our stuff would be like, "Wow, look at them! They're in the studio. They are real." Yeah. But if if it's oh like, gosh, a new angle that we've never like yeah. But or like like if I'm in the booth, like recording PX3 or something, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like that's that's good stuff. Uh, uh, you could see what I'm what I'm researching for the next show. Sure. But if it's like 10:30, like I don't know, man. Again, for a younger for a younger crowd, because uh, you know there's plenty of times at 10:30 it would have been like, great, the B-reels are ready, shots, bro, <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because other like I don't want to take a B-reel if I'm just watching TV. Just farting. But no one wants to see that. Straight farting. I don't want to post that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. But uh. Uh, uh, you know what I had a chance to watch over the weekend? Rewatch over the weekend? Hey, what, Bryce? Blade Runner 2049. Mm, Have you, you seen think? that since since it came out? No, and in fact, I do owe it a rewatch because I saw it with Andrew and Roshni, um, and it was when my back was still super fucked. Oh. Uh, and so, uh, uh, yeah, we can curse now, right? Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, so... Uh, we were in those big fluffy chairs uh, at like an AMC Select or something. Uh, and so I thought it was going to be better for my back. It was not. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I, I was constantly adjusting it like up and down and everything. Because like uh, if I was in one position too long, it would be a problem. And then I would just walk out of the theater just so I could walk around uh, uh, and get, you know, reduce some, some pressure on it. But even then, I liked it. Yeah. Oh, also earlier that day, I did a uh, uh, <laughs> me and Darren and Jeff Kanata did a DTNS, a Daily Tech News show, without Tom at the LA Podcasting Festival for a crowd of it's, uh, big numbers, small numbers. 22. Zero people. Oh. No. The only zero person show. Oh. And, and that was, that was, uh, the festival was not particularly well attended. It was during the day. Uh, and then there was also the, they scheduled the only other thing that was happening. They scheduled directly opposite us. So uh, uh, the only people that came in during the show were like, Hey, when is, uh, I forget what the other podcast was like, when is that going to start? And we're like, oh, we're not them. We're, when, we're a totally other thing. And they just walked out. Oh, when so I got this? a little drunk before I went to go see uh, Blade Runner 2049 <laughs> and my back hurt. So wow. I need to go. I need to see it again. Anyway, that, uh, that's a long way up. of saying I need to see it. Again. I think it holds uh, up. Uh, so it, I, I 
went to the restroom and then uh, I, I got a text from our friend uh, Devian Olive who uh, uh, was asking, hey, I'm at DEF CON or I'll be at DEF CON. You'll be at DEF CON. Or was that just a brief thing you were doing? Uh -huh. And I had to explain, um, uh, we had a very safe gamble locally that didn't make enough money for me to, I, I pulled No, up. the answer I, was no. It, yes, well, the answer we, is yeah, no. Brian will not <laughs> be will a not DEF, be a DEF CON. <laughs> I will be a DEF CON. Ah, oh, yeah. Wow. I'll most def. Most def. Most def con is what it's called. That's right. To Mrs. Fat Boo. Wait, I don't think most def calls himself most def anymore. No, no, no. He, 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 he Wait, Cat what? Stevens. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I almost oh, you that. Seen Wait, what's funny. Yeah. What's funny is Cat Stevens, Cat Stevens yes. became uh, Yusuf, Yusuf Islam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Ye so, Ye Yasin Bey. Yasin Bey. Okay, there you go. I don't shout out, Mr. Smith. Uh, you guys want to do a short after things? Yeah, I, I, I guess I pooped too long. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maine yeah, had Maine to. Had uh, it was a really important poop, though. I'm glad we're. Still I actually, about. I don't want to even go on this conversation because I have a lot of conversation to be had off mic about number two. Yep. Lately, but it's oh. a, it's it's inappropriate okay. to do on the live stream. Not on this live stream. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow well, on the live stream. When, when my daughter's there. And is she going to be there the whole time, is she? I don't know. You tell me she doesn't want to hear about poop? Uh, well, let's do, let's do after things and not the rest of this conversation. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of fiber. Moving on. Okay. It's great. Uh, all right. We're Smooth gonna... like an Apple product. <laughs> Seamless. That's definitely right, what this is. Because I have thoughts about this. Like, okay. Move! When you have on. the in the morning, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum, it looks ba -da -bum, like, like moving on. Da. Yeah, <laughs> we're moving on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <let's> <laughs> All right. We'll start after things in three, two. Welcome to after things. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Here. Nope. I, I won't. <laughs> No, you are. Okay. You were doing it. No. Just do it. Try You're, it one more time. One more. And three, two. Welcome to After Things. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood. Joined, as always, by Bryce Castillo. Hello. And the only other After Things host, uh -huh. uh, Justin Robert Young. Yeah, hello. Uh. Hey. Everyone knows that classic Justin Robert Young voice. <laughs> hey, look at me. I'm Justin Robert Young. Gabagool. <laughs> Gabagool. Uh, this is a, this is the show all about being creative professionals and uh, 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 being creators on the internet. Uh, I, I thought we, we were short Andrew today, but maybe just a little bit of an update on some of our our personal stuff. I've got a little bit of a marbles update, which is marbit kind of, marbit up. Started it's off. It's marbin time. It's mar <laughs> <laughs> I, you should totally go off that. So, <laughs> Marvin really be your catchphrase. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, so I, I do the the LFG Marble Races stream thing, and uh, we we actually just wrapped up our third season on Friday, and we're gonna start our fourth one. Um, but who won? Uh, uh, Miravina did. Miravina won. Miravina the was How the champion. How much? Did she pay you to win? Yeah, because it's a it's a payola Everybody thing, right? Everybody knows it's rigged. It's right? a big payola yeah. rig. No, it's, it it's a yeah. That's right. That's right. It's rigged. Ironically, it's free, and I'm the one who has to pay to give people their gifts. Uh, uh, um, but but uh, since the last time we talked about it on this show, uh, uh, I, I don't think I'd brought it up. But but I opened up a Patreon for for the marbles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's not done, Bryce. <laughs> What? Let it go. Let it go. LFG. LFGX. Refresh bit. All right. Okay. All right. Let me join. Oh, that's right. I remember we were talking. We talked about X briefly a while. So, so I started that at the start of our third season, and. um uh, we just wrapped up our third season, and uh, I, I think I think that we're doing uh, really quite well. Um, uh, we've got uh, 150 dollars a month, which is which is all right. I I, I I've set the tiers at, at three dollars a month and six dollars a month, mm -hmm. um, which which I think uh, gives people like a, a you know 
a way to support, hey, I want to chip in, or a way to get uh, extras like VODs and stuff. So in the $6 a month, that's LFGX. And that's where the archives are. That's mm -hmm. where I've got a 90-minute a version. So when you want to watch, you can just watch it without all the timers and the waiting. Um trying to do stuff with the music so that there's there's a tangible value add and i'm still figuring out what is the best use of time on that um but it's but it's interesting i i think you brought up a really interesting question because uh the first thing you said was uh it's it's doing pretty well and and i immediately thought what's pretty well mm -hmm. yeah like, what what is success how do you yeah. define it and and uh uh and i'm hmm. curious I, I, you don't have to share no, I, yeah. here if you don't yeah, but, 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 you but, don't have to but in your heart have you defined <laughs> success or yeah reveal your heart <laughs> yeah I, I don't i don't yeah. have yeah. Yeah. yeah just open yeah. it up it's amazing <laughs> just, how as soon as andrew leaves <laughs> immediately as soon as andrew gone. leaves it becomes <laughs> poop and characters <laughs> uh, so i didn't i i i i you're right, because I didn't have a hard number. I don't even right now have a, 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 a hard-defined number of what success is. But one of the things that I think are good signs are um, the, 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 the amount and the pledging has been stable over the past three months, really, since, since, since it started. Um, uh, it does cover, uh, like Open Bayou mentioned, it covers the small things that I'm pay I have to pay for. Open Table, which is a couple bucks a month. I got a Squarespace. I got a website. It's about covering all of that more or less, uh, or more than, um, but the thing that I think about it right now is, so we've got 27 patrons, which is good. And I think for any one stream, generally, I would say about a hundred viewers is the, is the viewership. If I get a hundred people playing in a match, I would say that is like right now that's, that's in line with like a, a very well attended stream. And so I think as one of those numbers go up. Hopefully, the other number can go up as well. Either more viewership leading to more patronage, or I, more patronage as a reflection of better or more engaged viewership. Uh, number one, I think you're 100 percent right. Uh, uh, in in that um, patronage will always be a percentage of total simultaneous viewership. Uh, what I would love to figure out is a way for you to refer to, like, at this point, your job is sort of to memorize the names and know, like, by crossing the threshold into patronage, you become mm -hmm. a, a, a real boy, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, uh, uh, but you don't want to, like, for example, on Great Night, uh, a, a show that is built on, sassy attitude you know, used yeah. to be called night attack <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. uh, uh, we would have no problems just or that acting... it was called sassy cats <laughs> <laughs> meow acting as though nobody was real humans uh, and everybody was pieces of garbage except for real humans who uh, were patrons and so on uh -huh. uh, i wonder if there's a soft version of that you can do in marbles where it's Marbin time. <laughs> so, so, well, I, Justin, every time you say it, it's going to derail the conversation. And oh, really? Wow. I didn't realize that. Wow. <laughs> Good to know. So, Good to know. What I'll, I'll keep that in mind the yeah. next time I say it. That's kind of why I'm, I like this, the LFGX portion of this, the like archives catalog part of it, because um, that's a place for. Uh, for growth a little bit one of the other things is on on patreon i don't spell it out too too much because i don't have any hard plans for it right now but um if if you're a patron i you know, you, you you like put into patreon what your benefits are and one of them is distinguished so i have ideas for games that will involve community or may involve names of people right oh maybe we're simulating a team and i need to come up with names of people yeah that is that is something that people can can be involved in and the LFGX side of it is, oh, this is a name that we can play around and try new things with. We can, what if we tried it? What if we did a baseball thing? What if we did a thing? 
and maybe it works or maybe it doesn't. Well, yeah, that, that's that's what I would say for you at this point is just mm-hmm. listen to your audience, and, and especially when it comes to stuff that you're going to put a lot of effort into. Like uh, uh, the 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 ninety minute version is great. Uh, it would be even better for you to take a look at how many people download it and view it and and uh, or give you feedback on it because there may or may not in the mind of a patron or the mind of your community be other things that are probably even less intensive than re-editing something down to a a fairly substantial running length Absolutely. Uh, that would that would matter more to them and 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 I think about that all the time yeah because I like the marbles in 90 digest stream. It is not that complicated to put together. Turns out a two, those two hour streams cut down to 90 minutes pretty easy, but it is a good amount of work. It's a lot yeah. of storage. And is it a substantial value add to the idea of the catalog here? We're not, we'll see. We're not quite we'll sure see. because we're already talking small numbers. What is a representative view count on something only 27 people can see to begin with? So, uh, okay, so you have a two-hour experience that is open to anyone. Yep. Would it be weird to call anybody on the Patreon like a a uh, uh, to allow them to be in the Pro League, which is a one race? It's a very short race mm-hmm. uh, that that happens afterwards. So ten to fifteen minutes more per each mm-hmm. podcast. And and then you can refer to them as they're playing the main game. They're like, oh my goodness, it, it, like uh, you know, uh, Magic Johnson is playing in the Olympics, and it's like, uh, mm-hmm. of course, uh, he's a pro leaguer, so uh, yeah. of course he's in 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 the lead. I uh, like it would be technically doable. It it would be a little ordinary because you're we're all still working within this other game to some degree. Um, uh, but I don't know. I don't know if I don't know what? who would who oh would watch goodness. it or how, or if that is a, because you know this one of the things is uh, this past week I tried changing up the format just a little bit to play around and see hey instead of the normal like top ten people what if we only did people who beat a certain other racer and you know I'm glad I tried it and I also don't think that that was worth kind of trying to shove people into something more complicated. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the, the point is you got to listen to the community on that. Like, like what are they having fun with? What is the chat engagement? What is uh, the, the stickiness uh, afterward in like the discord or just word of mouth or people are like, Oh, that was great. Uh, yes to all of that. But what if mm-hmm. hypothetically mm-hmm. it's Marvin time, it's Marvin time, everything Didn't derail it, <laughs> losing power. Every- just kidding. Mm-hmm. Derailed it. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. One more nail in the coffin. <laughs> That's all in all. We're just another marb in the wall. So imagine everything is the same experience. Mm. Yeah. But when you cross the threshold to become a, 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 a LFGX member or whatever, mm. uh, you do not live stream the event, but instead enter them into a competition and it's only you letting them play, doing all of your co- color commentary, mm-hmm. and then you post it as an unlisted special YouTube video. So, so it's, an, it's, it's fundamentally like nothing changes about the experience for anyone except for now there exists a secret fight club. Mm-hmm. And I, well, and I... I, I don't think that the it's Marvin. <laughs> I don't. Think this, <laughs> See, I, I could do it too. You could. You could. I like that it got the same laugh out of you as when I did it. <laughs> I mean, that's how good it is. It's a good one. It's a yeah. good. It's a goodie. I, I, I. Part of me thinks, uh, in terms of listening to the audience, I. I think that that gets away from the what the I think they just like watching it. I think there's a part of me that is trying to keep a certain amount of space for. I think they just like watching the show and doing the show. Well, and, you know, I think- and it's it, and it will take a uh, you know some flyers on what is the next thing. But in terms of making a longer version of it that they don't see until later and it's not live and it's only oh a- no 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 very very short. All you do right, is but- is. You 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 let them know there exists yeah. an unlicensed underground boxing league, uh, and 
the first and second rules are you don't talk about it, but you will announce mm -hmm. and everybody who's in the league knows because they have access to the unlisted video, mm -hmm. how many times people have won. So now a patron can, you, when you refer to them, say a uh, 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 two-time winner of the league that shall not be mentioned uh, is in the lead or whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, it, 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 that would that would take some doing um, to, to to figure out between the online offline because you still need people to be in the chat. They, yeah, yeah, they have to press the button whether the stream is on or off. You, I no, can't put them just in. Ask it. all of them to give you their passwords. Log in as <laughs> yeah. all of them. But 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 <laughs> also, please give me money and your password. <laughs> but this is where experimentation goes into play because I think that would be a good idea if it wasn't this game. Like I think it would be great to do an offline thing or something that involves the names of people who are in Patreon or or in the community. Um Oh snap. Uh, that is is maybe not uh, I I I I would love to build things that are not in this game because that oh, the more people are used to it and that opens things up. So and I think that's that's what you wanted to do with LFG, right? Is, right. is not make it. It's not. A, it's not a, the, just the marbles, marbles League. It's it's the League of Fun Games. So imagine, Plural. yeah, there is. Uh, uh, we've talked about adding more sports, air quotes, yeah, because they're all rigged and fixed. That's right. And you're fraudulent. <laughs> uh, but 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 imagine if the secret league is always really just a beta test for the next game you're gonna audition. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh my God! Like, like I would sign up to find out if how how well I'm doing, <laughs> yeah. with, whether I see it but or not. But not elsewise. So That's... please mind your p's and q's, young Bryce. <laughs> oh. Please, Brian, and he will give you favor. Oh, wait. If not, he will deny you. You will wait until it is uh, what. What time? Is that morbid? <laughs> it's uh, morbid. Oh, well, it's, well, it's, well. It, it's about four eleven, Brian. <laughs> well, that's a that's a special number. Yeah. Um, four one one information. <laughs> we used to pay t like two dollars just to two dollars. Yeah. Four one one was a cost thing. Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Would oh, they connect yeah. you for free? No. If they I'm would, paying two dollars, no, they, they, no, they would just the tell connect. you. They would they just would, tell yeah, you. You would the just number. call somebody and be like, "Hey, I'm looking for Al's flowers," and they go, "Yeah, Al's flowers, huh?" Be, because flip, all they were flip, doing flip, is flip, going flip, through flip, the white flip, page. Flip. I say, what, but like the Wait, operator does that. Two one nine eight five four four eight six eight. Four eight six eight. Did I get that right? Yep. Bye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, but but exactly right is is we, we can use that as like a smaller scale place to test things out. You know, for a while, uh, 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 for one of the weeks that we did marbles, I had tested out. Hey, what if we? What if I cut up every race of a, of the streams, about sixteen of them, and put them out on YouTube every day? Does anybody have any interest in that? Would does that does that play to anyone? And the answer was like, nah, we already watched these. We already, and we already watched it. Yeah. But, so, I mean, I, but, but, but yeah, uh, branching out into other things and other games has always been something on the table. And so that's what, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see stability with the Patreon yeah. as, as we're figuring, trying new things, you know. Here's the crucial thing. And, and this is just in true in any kind of situation where you are building a community online specifically is there is what your audience wants, what they're verbalizing. There's what they can't say that they want. So they just kind of have these general feelings or like the more you stay in touch with them, the more you know, oh, okay, they don't like this, but maybe they don't want to say that they don't like that because they don't want to harsh the vibe, which is good. It means that you have a bunch of people that care about the community. Uh, and then there are things that you know you need to change and you need to do it in a way that is appropriate for that community. And and those are all three different skills, each harder than the other one in, in that order. Uh, uh, and I think you are right now at level two where where you've got to know, and it's hard, like you said, with a small sample size to know like, okay, well, obviously if I ask you guys, what you want to do, they'll just say nothing. We just love having fun. Right. 
but there's something that they would kind of want that if you introduce, they'd be excited about. And then if they'd be excited about it, maybe you can excite them into coughing up a little green. And and like, like my patron doesn't have any goals or milestones on it at the, at the moment because I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know really what it was going to be, but also like, uh, people like, People like marbles. I mean, it's fu- it's fun. I love doing right. it. Um, and so there's always, uh, I, I I won't say it's like a, a lifeboat or anything, but you always have kind of in the playbook is like, well, we could do another day of marbles every week. If you if you guys like this, we can do more of it. We could just do more of that. And that is, uh, you know, that is something that can be, uh, that is, to me that is that is a simple idea that would make sense uh, in general for lack of. Uh, a brand and, and new thing all the time. I agree. So, because uh, I mean, like even even great but, night. Like when we moved to the, doing the bonuses, I know a very long time ago when I, you know, was started being around. I thought like, well, why don't they just do another day of of night attack? You know, when it was night attack at the time. Like, it. I mean, you know, with X Y and Z. But we do now basically, mm-hmm. and it's. And it is in a way that we like, and it's a way that the fans seem to enjoy as well. And and it's also a little bit different, special, and right. more convenient because we live in the same city. A <laughs> little bit. But for the user, right? Like, yeah. I like the podcast. Here's more podcast. And yeah. and it's a it's an understood transaction. So I, I, I just want to make sure that those feel right because I, I think there's also just a part of it that's like, that is like, I want to support this. I don't really want to think about it. Too, I don't want to get too involved. Also. In general, I always advise nobody do any physical fulfillment of anything ever. Ever. That's right. However. And also, okay. Go however. Ahead. Okay. What if mm-hmm. you remind everyone at the beginning of every night of marbles that everyone can play, everyone can win. Mm-hmm. And everyone but, can get these gold doubloons I found at the bottom of the ocean. But only patrons oh. get a patch. Yeah. What does that patch say, Brian? It says they won on this mm. date. Or you you name each race. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or, or you, maybe you have, maybe you have a design that always you know that that is for all of them. Ooh, what if it had this specific time? Uh, what time? Yes. Uh, for example, Marbin time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you walked into that one. Actually, uh, you know what? <laughs> Actually, that's right. Don't make anything specific. No, just say, just say it's Marbin, Marbin time. time. Yeah. Only patrons, like whoever, anybody can win. But if you are a patron yeah. and you won, you get. And it's Marvin time. By the way, may or may not be against Patreon TOS. Double check it. Uh, oh yeah, because that's they have they have so, a thing about contests. Uh, uh, pa- uh, Patreon yeah, yeah, specific yeah. contests with with, with and, specific yeah. And, and uh, with with the way that I do uh, have marbles, the marbles league set up is that uh, you know across the season we'll have any number of of winners. Right, we'll have the person who wins the regular season, and we have a couple of other races where people uh, win. Um, and so I send them a, a prize pack. So I send them like little stickers and, and stuff like that already. And that's that's the, the game that's open to everybody. And I I I like how simple and easy it is to say, Eric, you can play, it's free. If you win at the end of the season, I'll send you a thing of stickers. I I, I believe the closest thing I'm that pops to mind is Marvel Comics. They understood that there would be a, uh, here and again would be continuity errors, right? So they would get all of this fan mail saying, "Spider Man, Spider Man put- had a red lighter, and instead he had a blue lighter when he uh, fought Doc Ock." Right. So, so rather than you know push back and say, "Shut up, nerd." Uh, what they did mm-hmm. is they embraced it, and they would put it on the back page, and they would take uh, uh, the most legitimate of those of like, oh yeah, we definitely implied that Peter Parker didn't know how to drive in this episode, but did know how to drive in this yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, congratulations, you get a no prize. Yes, and they would literally send an envelope with nothing in it, uh, and and it says, congrats, here's your no prize. So 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 maybe. Think of some and they became of, coveted. Oh, oh like yeah. They became no, hugely cultural duper. coveted. Yeah. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
man, that that would definitely get me to uh, cross over the and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very tricky man to please, Bryce. But, but, uh, Get I, your ducks in a row, because Brian will tolerate nothing. But I, I do want to, I do want to be careful about about setting expectations on expenses and things like that. Yes. You know, the prize, try the prize everything packs. free. That you can before you get into anything. I mean, like, like my my lesson on anything Kickstarter or Patreon is, boy, like, take what it would what it would cost, spec out exactly everything that you would ever want to physically send to people, spec it out, uh, and then quadruple it, and then think about should I go any higher? Because uh, uh, a, what you don't want to do is devalue the concept of physical goods. Uh, uh, right. in, in any kind of internet thing because it is low margin it is uh, something that is a pain in the ass and, and even when you get to the level that like Brian is with the, the store the online store it's still a gigantic paycheck to get a fulfillment center if you were doing that all the time stupid right stupid expensive so, like 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 if, if anybody who's ever bought anything from the store know that like it was five dollars on top of everything else so my point is uh -huh. even at scale it's always expensive right so so the best thing you can do if you're going to create a world where everything that you say is exciting to your audience and that should always be the goal whenever you're creating an internet community it should either be enlightening or exciting uh if you are sending out blah physical merch then you are hurting the ability to send out rad physical merch because people are going to think like oh maybe it's just another right like, but if it has a story, if it's exciting, if it if it connects with the audience, that's a whole different story. Uh, and then uh, it also just you know makes sense for you to do it on the also on the cheap. if it's authentic. Um, so things we know about your audience, they all have computers. Yeah, uh, that's phones. true. That's true. Maybe maybe <laughs> their laptops, maybe their mobile devices, maybe their iPads or whatever. But mm, computers. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to say it. What? <laughs> I'm not saying anything, man. I'm not... trying to help you out. If you, I'm like Ed McMahon. If if you got very cheap gold stars that just says, "Yep, I won." I won. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Like, like, like it, it I mean, does. It doesn't matter. But I but it's... number one, and you'd have to make sure that they're different fonts. <laughs> Right. I mean, otherwise it'd be very confusing. <laughs> That's what you were saying, right? That's yeah. Right. I number what it kind of looked like two towers. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's what I, Brian was going for. I and one. <laughs> I won. And you but you need the serifs. All right. No, you yeah, need, yeah, a little, you all, need a little you need a little serif. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, what am I doing this? No. <laughs> this, this whole what metaphor. happened? Knock it down. All right. No, no, no. God. Wait, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> It's not funny. Ladies You're, and gentlemen. We can't all be on the same you, side of this. What are you talking Damn, about? Damn Manhattan. <laughs> I don't know. We can't all be on the same side of this. No, stop um, it. This is what happens when Andrew leaves early, man. That's what happens. Well, this whole thing falls apart. Um, and, and that is <laughs> that is the idea behind the, the prize packs. Is like One of the stickers that you get is actually this die cut uh, thing where you get the trophies. Um the little virtual trophies that you can stick on stuff and oh nice you know the uh, uh decals and things um and so like like yeah that that that's that is the name of the game but i want to make sure that the patreon is is something that is based around content which is what i like and would like to do more of and, instead oh, of you know stickers what? or more yeah. fulfillment stuff when when we have a like there is a store like i there's a yes. there's a dropship uh, most of its dropship store and patreon gets you a discount code on that which is not exactly the same story but gets it starts the conversation one thing that you can do that i don't believe would violate tos is everybody plays you win you don't win whatever mm -hmm. but if you're a patron and you win you go on the board mm. whether it's a, a, a handwritten thing yep. or a, like it can Bryce be a, writes it on his arm like those <laughs> hot tub streamers <laughs> Bryce can you do this show from a hot tub you ever thought about that <laughs> I, you know I just, just get a standing desk get a little get a little kiddie pool <laughs> show some cheek but uh, I have to be able to reach the keyboard and the mouse they all look 
You think Amaranth says uh, uh, oh, no? No, she's just out there making that cash. That's true. Uh, uh, I was just thinking well, how much we, I love it. When I'm I go, helping. When, when I go to the to the <laughs> gas station and I start pumping gas, yeah. and just when the gas starts pumping, uh, the machine stops it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Then, then I have to be like, oh well, and then I re-enter my credit card exactly, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. then I, uh, I love that too. <laughs> and I think to myself, it's Marvin time. You, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> he said the thing. Um, so Bryce, I, I think this is this is very interesting. I'm glad that you helpful. launched your Patreon. Where can people go to find the Patreon? Uh, Patreon.com/lfgx, just four letters. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, 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 I want, I, I want to figure out a way to, to, to make, I, I don't want it to just be a, 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 a mailing envelopes solution, right? Like, no, if that brings people in, that would be God great. sakes, not a mailing envelope solution. Yeah. J- j- just, <laughs> I want to, I want it to be it's where, a, I don't know what character Justin is playing right now, <laughs> but I want to know his backstory. <laughs> I'm helpful. My name is Mr. Helpful. I'm very helpful. I'm moving the conversation along. This is Adam Sandler's new character. I'm, 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 I'm just a helpful Bryce, guy. Bryce. Here's my official advice. This is his official advice. <laughs> All right. Thank you for just letting so me you know. know. Just Thank so you know. How prepare. helpful. Open right, your helpful. mind. Right. Open your mind. Go ahead, Brian. You tell him. Tell him. Before I tell him, B dubs. I need you to hype it up a little bit. Hey, everybody, are you ready for some real, 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 real. advice? Every other piece of advice here, nee, dodgy suspect. Not the original article. Original. What's happening right now advice. is the real advice right from the mouth of Brian Brush. But here it comes. Do, do, do. The real <laughs> advice. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Register its Marvin talk. <laughs> 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 no, uh, uh, my, my, my real advice is just a, 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 a non physical good that you don't have to uh, uh, send out yeah. that. Oh, is you know, different mm. if you're a patron. So, like winning, so, yeah. winning as a, an anybody is a fun experience. However, just just make winning as a patron somehow different. Yeah. Uh, whether it's writing a name on a thing or or you know drawing a picture, or doing a stunt, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I, it's it's just figuring it out. And time. that was the real, <laughs> real, real, real <laughs> advice <laughs> brought to you by Brian Brushwood and Brian. Penn's Oil. Get yeah. your oil at Penn's Oil. Ching. It's made from pens. <laughs> Just... All right. Well, it's uh, been... <laughs> been oil. It's been oil. It's been oil. Who's oiling it? Hey, bro, you oiling? You the Houston oiler? <laughs> What are you, Warren Moon? Uh, what are you? What are you? What are you <laughs> now a current Tennessee Titan? <laughs> Is that what you are? What are you, Earl Campbell? Oil it up. After. Ah, uh, there we go. Come back. Landed it. Come back, man. You got it. Come back. It landed. <laughs> it gets too dumb. It gets too dumb. That's it. It's dumb. <laughs> Cut it. Dump it. Dump it. This one's trash. <laughs> this is trash. Was Dump it. Good. Dump it. One. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here. Even even Andrew. Oh saying. my God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's a doll. How does image. he only have four fingers? <laughs> <laughs> it's a dolly <laughs> image where it failed to render all the fingers. Wow. <laughs> he only has four fingers. <laughs> Oh, thank you for just for listening. That's what happens when you raise your hand too fast to the question, "Who's up for some Marbin time?" <laughs> we'll be back He's in too a few excited hours for Court Killers. I think we'll have Andrew Main on Court Killers. That'd be that be the whole thing. All right, everybody, hang four. Yeah, for the rest of the day. Bye. Soup. Mm-hmm.